following is a presentation of Nesson University. A wet weekend was forecast in the Northeast, and here at College Park, guess what? Rain has turned into snow. A perfect setting for an ACC College Football Saturday. It's all about seem to mind neither does Boston College and they're ready to go here in College Park Coors Light presents another ACC College Football Saturday we've got two teams who told us this week they are better than their records Boston College at one and six and the Maryland Terrapins at two and five hi everybody Rich Waltz along with Keith Jones. This should be fun in this rain and this snow. Now both coaching staffs told us, Keith, that at times this year they felt better than their records. Well, now they have a great opportunity to prove it. And one of these teams is going to leave this ball game feeling that much better about themselves as they try to get ready for the tail end of the season. The losing team, uh, they're going to have some struggles. This is going to end up being a very poor year. So this is a pivotal game in terms of momentum, recruiting, and the other things that go into salvaging the season. Now Keith really wanted to dress up for Halloween but here's the closest we could come he's going to dress up now as both head coaches to get a win in this one you're Randy Edsel what do you do well first of all do I get Edsel's <laughs> six handicap in golf <laughs> no, no I don't think so if I'm Randy Edsel I go with CJ Brown I keep the ball on the ground you got a quarterback in Brown that has had over 100 yards rushing in consecutive ball games he throws the ball adequately though we'll be tempted to see and it'll be uh, interesting to see how the ball flies in this weather Keep it on the ground, eat up the clock, keep BC on the sidelines. That's what I do if I'm Maryland. Okay, toss the Maryland hat. You are now Frank Spaziani, the head coach at Boston College. Your team has played hard all year. How do you win this ball game? Well, I, I take this hat and I button up the chin strap and I go straight ahead. I run this ball just as much as I can in between the hashes right at this Maryland Terrapin defense. You've got a size advantage up front with the Eagle offensive line. You'll keep that Maryland team on the side line offensively control the clock this is going to be a game where BC has an opportunity to really control everything of course neither coach is wearing that hat <laughs> they got the snow gear on here's our four keys to the game and again repeating myself if you're Boston College control the ground game make sure that you keep that clock running shorten up this game if you're Maryland you need to play selfishly now what I mean by that is no turnovers keep the ball to yourself use Brown and your running backs is passing as little as you can get away with and you eat up that clock hopefully we'll have a short game and whoever runs the ball best will end up winning our key to the game stay warm and dry that was a nice nice work by my partner there as we get close to Halloween on an ACC college football Saturday every day you face financial choices large and small when you make the right choices you head in the right direction at BB&T we've spent more than 135 years sharing our knowledge helping clients become more informed in all areas of their financial lives. With our checking and savings options and online and mobile banking, it's easier than ever to find the direction just right for you. Talk to us today about your banking needs and know how it feels to know more. BB&T, official bank of the ACC. Wow, what's that? Oh, it's the new AT&T smartphone. <sighs> nice, I wish I could afford one. Yeah, I got a good deal. Look at that screen. Ooh. Fast too, right? Oh yeah last week FITD it streams movies real web browsing turn left now <laughs> look at this camera hold on let's get a photo I'm listening to downloaded music 
Oh, I can afford that. See ya. The AT&T Impulse 4G. For $29.99, there's no excuse not to get your own. AT&T. A lot of talk out there about who makes the most dependable truck. Well, talk is cheap. Here's a fact for you. The Toyota Tundra received J.D. Power & Associates' most dependable large pickup six years in a row. Now that's a statement no other truck can make. Save up to $67.50 on the 2011 Toyota Tundra Double Cab with 0% APR. The full-size Tundra from Toyota. Hey, thanks for joining us, everyone, from our ACC College Football Saturday studios in Atlanta. I'm Andre Aldridge. We'll get you back to College Park in just a moment on this ninth week of the uh, current campaign, final Saturday of October. we got some interesting ACC action later tonight, unbeaten Clemson at Georgia Tech. That's at 8 p.m. Eastern start. And going on right now, how about Virginia Tech, first place in the Coastal Division, visiting Duke, Hokies, third and goal from the two. And, yes, they're 12th in the BCS rankings. Logan Thomas, Eric Martin there. That made it 7 0. Fourth quarter just underway. It's a 14 to 10 lead for the Hokies right now. Our thumb it in question Who is the best pro to come out of either Maryland or BC? Boomer Sison, Vernon Davis, Randy White. Hey, you see our choices there. Just thumb it in to South 76884. We'll update you throughout the contest. After a short break, we'll get you back out to Capital One Field at Bird Stadium. Rich Keith and Jen will have the kickoff. Stay tuned. Honey, this is the one. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Whoa. Whoa is right. It's got larger capacity for more storage. Wow. Check out this great brushed silver exterior. Shiny. Can't you just feel the cold? I can. You really want to experience cold? Oh, yeah. Crack this baby open. I will. The Coors Light Silver Bullet Aluminum Pints. The mountains let you see it's cold. The bottle lets you feel the cold. The wide mouth lets you taste the cold. Joe? Joseph. What? Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. The following game preview is rated B. Tonight, Bruins, Canadians, part two, in an old-time hockey original six rivalry. They're beating up and they're beating them up. This time, the Bruins travel to Montreal into enemy territory, and the offense looks to shake off their early season struggles and reclaim their place among the NHL elite. He scores! Sticks the dagger through the hook! Tonight, Bruins, Canadians, Coverage begins at 6.30 on Nesson. If you love your car and want to protect it, then you need Haviland Motor Oil. Chevron Haviland contains the Deposit Shield formulation. This protects your fuel economy and helps minimize carbon emissions, which of course helps to protect the environment. So look for the shield and protect what matters. Havilland. ACC College Football Saturday. Brought to you by Coors Light. By Wendy's. By Toyota. And by Jameson Inn. On the campus of the University of Maryland. College Park. Boston College arrives. Boston College has faced a, a couple of two very good opponents their last two times out, Clemson and Virginia Tech. And here comes Maryland onto a wet and soggy field. And down there with them, Jen Hildreth. Hi, Jen. Hello, Rich. You know, nor'easter is never a term you want to hear in the forecast for a football game, but that's what we've got coming toward us here in College Park. It's somewhat of a mixture between rain and snow right now. Pretty chilly in the 30s. The winds are coming through. What does that mean for these guys? Well, this field, as you mentioned, is pretty sticky and muddy out there. I talked to Maryland equipment manager Ron Oringer. He told me he was really pushing the cleats with the screw-in bottoms versus the molded bottoms to try to get these guys a little bit better traction. They also gave the game officials twice the amount of game balls in an attempt to keep that ball dry in the quarterback's hands. But you know what, Rich? As Randy Edsel told me, sometimes you just have to embrace the elements and go with it. Hey, guys, I think we're in for a, a great old-school college football game here on a wet, cold, rain, sleet, snow afternoon here in College Park. Maryland actually won the toss. They deferred. They want to be on defense first, but I'm sure they didn't want to have to kick the ball out of bounds and give good field position to Boston College, but that's exactly what happens here. 
And so the Boston College Eagles, who last week at Virginia Tech hung in against Virginia Tech in case, in actuality, kick Chase Reddick. Kicking team. Ball Chase Reddick had a very good first half, and BC led Virginia Tech, who was 12th in the BCS at that time. They led him by a score of 7-6. to six. The game got away from Boston College in the second half. You see Reddick's numbers there. Those six interceptions have been a, a little bit of a cause concern. His decision-making. Coach Spaziani told us that sometimes he's been real good and sometimes not so good, so they want him to work on his decision-making in this elements, these elements, this weather. I'm not sure how much passing will be done as regards that decision making. Well, Landon Finch is the running back. He went for 82 yards last week on 19 carries at Virginia Tech. That was one of the positives they took out of the game. And Reddick goes to the air, swings it out to Lars Anderson, the tight end. And Anderson across midfield, a pickup of 11 yards. And so Boston College, a nicely designed play to start things. Here's the offensive line, the Toyota starting lineup. This is an offensive line that has to give Reddick a little more time than they gave him last week against Virginia Tech and a guy that's got to get open on the outside is Bobby Swiger. 16 catches in two games going into last week. He was shut out last week against the Hokies. First and 10 Boston College for the 47 of Maryland. Finch straight ahead and he has a nice gain seven yards on the pickup. Mario Rousen made the stop. He's playing in place of the injured Kenny Tate. Maryland's defense, can they get pressure on Reddick? One thing's for sure, you'll see Joe Villano at the bottom of a lot of piles. He is the leading tackler for an interior defensive lineman in the country. Lauren Gorey playing well in the middle. And of course, Rousen is in for Kenny Tate. McDougal and Chisholm pretty good on the corners. Titus Till has had a very good freshman season at the safety spot. Finch off the left side and behind that big offensive line, he's got himself a first down. You know what, partner? I think these game conditions are perfect for Coach Frank Spaziani. This is right up his alley, isn't it? Uh, a defensive-minded guy. Spent a lot of time on the defensive side of the ball before being elevated to the head coach there at BC. And I, I think you're right. This is the kind where you just buckle up the chin strap, know that the ball's probably going to stay on the, on the ground. Rushing game is going to be very, very important. And just who can outwill the other? Finch to the backfield. First and 10. Good drive so far from Boston College. Big hole. Finch across the 30, down to the 25-yard line. Another 10-yard gain and another open gash in the defense of Maryland. Great, great lane opens here. Guard comes around. Actually, that's the tight end. Anderson with a great downfield block, a missed tackle, and Fitch right on the hip of Anderson. Finally brought down by Eric Franklin. Bobby Vadaro out there as well, one of the guards clearing the way fifth play of the drive and already Boston College is at the Maryland 25 yard line. Reddick is thrown at once he's completed that one pass Finch straight ahead another big hole and he's inside the 20 picks up the first down down to the 18 yard line Gorey and Rousen on the stop in the red zone brought to you by CPI security 16 times in nine touchdowns and four field goals for Boston College. And that TD to, to times in the red zone, Rich, 56%, something that Coach Spaziani talked to us about. You want that up around 70%, settling too many times for field goal attempts once they get into the opponent's red zone. Two tight ends set. Finch again, and he's through, and he's in. Touchdown, Boston College. In seven plays, length of the field, and they stick it in the end zone. And BC with a great start. Rolandon Finch picking up where he left off in the second half last week at Virginia Tech. Everybody pulls to their left, and he finds a little crease, does Finch. The intermediate backers, linebackers for Maryland run out too quickly, and right up the gut he goes. Nate Freeze with the extra point. These are not gimmies on a day like this. Clean snap and hold, and it's through. Impressive start for Boston College as the Eagles take it length of the field and lead it 7 0. Hey! Hi. How's it going? 
Look, I am really distracted by this sandwich. I'm probably going to veer into your lane. So, watch out. Accidents don't announce themselves. That's why the RX helps protect you with 360 degrees of safety and is an IIHS top safety pick for 2011. Lease the 2012 RX 350 all-wheel drive for $469 a month for 36 months with $37.94 due at signing. See your Lexus dealer. They have been called champions, all-stars, masters. But in an event this big, those titles vanish. And what emerges is the only title that matters. The next Iron <laughs> Premier Sunday, October 30th at 9 on Food Network. No one said living healthy was easy. At Tufts Health Plan, we know a healthier you is a work in progress. And we're here to help you every step of the way. Daycare can be expensive. So to save some money, morning. I found one that uses robots instead of real people. Because robots work for free. Good morning, female child. Are there flaws? Um, maybe. <laughs> There's an easier way to save. Get online. Go to Geico.com. Get a quote. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. There's something different about ACC student athletes. They excel both athletically and academically. Their success on the field carries on into their chosen field. They're leaders. The official corporate partners of the Atlantic Coast Conference are proud to support these young men and women as they carry on the ACC's tradition of excellence. Then, now, and always. Coors Light game break. Florida State hosting North Carolina State. Great day for E.J. Manuel. Back to pass here. Capping a 34-0 victory right there. He had over 300 yards passing. Now we want to get you back to College Park for more Turfs and Eagles. Rich, Jen, and Keith have it all. Seven nothing Boston College on top. Thank you, Andre. As the uh, Eagles get set to kick it off, there's the scoring drive. Verlanden Finch did most of the work in the 60 yards, and the sixth play was a touchdown run of 18 yards. He had 47 yards on that drive. Justice Pickett for Maryland at his 15-yard line, and Pickett, slow going, is out to the 27-yard line. Keep your eye right here on the center for Boston College. You're going to see some great athleticism by spining right there, and then that crease gets open. What's the shortest distance between two points? A straight line, and that's exactly where Deuce went. Deuce would be Roland and Finch for the touchdown. Now let's see if Maryland can move the football, and it's redshirt sophomore C.J. Brown with David Meggett in the backfield. On the option, Brown's pitch dropped by Meggett, and Brown has to recover it. This is a dimension that uh, the Maryland offense has embraced. When you've got Brown in there, the read option, the problem is it also forces you to put the ball in the air via pitches and handoffs, and sometimes, particularly in weather like this, it can get a little dicey. And you see Randy Edsel in his first year here at Maryland. Megan, he has a hole, and David Megan squirts across the 30 out to the 32-yard line. It's going to bring up a third down and about five. Here's the Maryland offensive line. Pete White's up front is getting the start in place of Andrew Ganella. Yet another big injury. Ganella, their best offensive lineman coming into the season. Matt Furstenberg at the tight end spot has caught 22 balls for Maryland. Third down, long four, and Megat's got the first down, cross the 45, out to the 47-yard line. Spencer Rossitano made the stop for Boston College. Megat shed at about 10 pounds in the offseason. He just runs right by a would-be tackler. That quickness is back in those legs. Went for 720 yards last year, coming up on 600 already this year. 
This time it's Brown who keeps it getting to the edge and he's dragged down from behind after a gain of 16. Jim Noel made the stop for Boston College. And there's C.J. Brown, the redshirt sophomore. And it was a game time decision, we were told, between Danny O'Brien and Brown. You see the completion percentage below 50. You see the yardage. But that's not where Brown can really hurt you. He can hurt you running the football. Justice Pickett in the backfield, his first carry. And he's down to the 34-yard line. That's a gain of almost five yards. Boston College defensively, you got Max Holloway on one end. His dad, of course, a three-time pro bowler in the NFL, Brian Holloway. Sean Duggan gets the start in Kevin Pierre-Lewis's spot. Kevin Pierre-Lewis, a fine linebacker, is out for this ball game as Pickett picks up the first down. He's down to the 23-yard line of Boston College. Well, so far, Rich, both of these teams have embraced the uh, one if by land, two we ain't going to do it. We're going to stay on land. Both teams rushing the football very effectively. Only one pass has been thrown in this game. It was complete. Brown has not thrown it yet. And on first and 10 for the 22, Megat left side. And Megat is stopped right at the 20 yard line. Max Holloway at the bottom of the pile. Two guys who had fathers that played with distinguished careers in the NFL. David Megat and Max Holloway. When talking with Gary Croton, the offensive coordinator for Maryland. He described the BC defense as similar to Temple. Now O'Brien to the air in a crowd and caught Quentin McCree short of the first down, just shy of the 15. It's a gain of six. So O'Brien puts it up for the first time. And Maryland looking at their second, third down opportunity on this drive. We're just underway. Boston College went 60 yards on their opening drive. Maryland with Brown rolling and his throw is bobbled and dropped and incomplete. Matt Furstenberg, the intended receiver. Now what does Maryland do here on fourth down and four? Field goals, as I mentioned with the extra points, are not gimmies. We watched both field goal units work before the game, and there were a lot of drop snaps, a lot of shanked kicks. And right now it's not so much the moisture or whether the ball is wet, but it is the footing, particularly the plant foot of the place kicker Ferrara. Well, Nick Ferrara has been accurate this year. This from 33 yards out. And his kick is up and good. Both teams came into this ball game feeling they had something to prove and both teams score on their opening drives. Boston College up 7-3. Boston Bruins individual game tickets for the 2011-2012 season are on sale. Catch your 2011 Stanley Cup champions in action as they return to the TD Garden to defend their title in marquee matchups against the Canadians, Flyers, Lightning, Canucks, and more. It's the Boston Bruins 2011-2012 season presented by the Massachusetts State Lottery. For tickets, call 617-624-2327 or visit bostonbruins.com. Every Tuesday, beginning November 8th, after a disappointing finish, the Red Sox offseason will be filled with big changes, big moves, and even bigger news. And Red Sox Hot Stove Live will follow the team every step of the way. How much of a house cleaning do the Red Sox need? When everyone else is asking what's next, only one place has the answers straight from the Sox. I don't think we need a fancier car. I think we got to fix some things under the hood. We're going to feel the team worthy of the fan support. Red Sox Hot Stove Live. Now it's time to move forward. Every Tuesday at 6, beginning November 8th on Nesson. Some people love their cars almost as much as they love their team.
Capital One Field on an ACC college football Saturday. Little rain, little wind, little snow. A little bit of everything. The forecast for today, winter weather advisory until 8 o'clock will be long gone, we hope, by then. Temperatures in the low to mid 30s and keep the wind gusts are a real issue as well, especially if there's moisture up to 25 miles an hour. It's a little bit calm right now and not as much precipitation coming down, but about 30 minutes before kickoff, I thought I was in Colorado or somewhere. <laughs> I tell you what though the conditions favoring both offenses as Spiffy Evans is backed up to his goal line Evans starts to the right side and he's cut right there at the 18 yard line. Let's go down to the field and Jen Hildreth. Jen. Rich, you guys want to know how the field's holding up. The, uh, the precipitation has slowed down, but the problem is what was here before. Not only do you worry about slipping, but you worry about sticking. There's a lot of clay in this soil. It's just what's native to this area. So if you stick, you try to cut, there's a chance your foot stays and doesn't move with you. Those are the two things you really need to kind of think about if you're out there in this mess. And Jen, they're going to replace this field next year, aren't they? And they're hoping to. They're trying to. There have been talks about putting some field Turpin. Yeah, well, this would be a great day to, to think about that. Let's see how Boston College responds now at their own 18 yard line. Finch, the feature back on that first drive, flag is falling down. Toast the uh, football out to the 23 yard line. It's a gain of four. These two teams combined for a total of 118 yards, 100 of them on the ground in their first two drives. It's pretty impressive stuff. And both of these clubs, as we talked about in the in the open, needing a win to try to salvage something out of a very disappointing year. And they're playing with a lot of attitude right now. Chase Redding, a California quarterback playing in the cold and the rain here in Maryland. Finch trying to cut back and he swallowed up. Now the first drive for Boston College started at their own 40 yard line and it was precision type stuff. Now they ate up a lot of the ground, uh, the yardage on the ground. Six plays in the total drive, five of them going on the ground and of course Finch finishing it off with that 18 yard touchdown gallop. Bennett did throw a pass and completed it for 13 yards. He may have to throw it here on third down and five. There's Finch's day already. Redding in the shotgun has time. Swing pass. Finch is caught and dropped. Cameron Chisholm on the corner came up to make the hit. And a great open field tackle by Chisholm. 40 stops on the year coming into it. Darren Drakeforth was over there to help as well, but they first uh, Boston College into their first punt situation. Brian Quigley. Ronnie Tyler is deep. Tony Logan, the fine punt returner, is dinged up for Maryland. And it's going to land and roll close down to the 40 yard line, and that's where Boston College will down at 35 yards. On the kick, Maryland gets the football when we return to College Park. Does your cable company keep charging you more and more and more? Stop paying so much for second best. Upgrade to Verizon Fios and get TV, internet, and phone for our best price. Just $89.99 a month, guaranteed for two years with no annual contract required. Go to verizon.com slash price and save $600 in your first two years with our best price online. Fios is a 100% fiber optic network that delivers superior picture quality, more HD, plus America's fastest, most consistent, and most reliable internet. Why keep paying so much for cable? Get Fios TV, internet, and phone for our best price online. $89.99 a month with a two-year price guarantee and the option of no annual contract. Ordering online is easy. You can even chat live with a Fios agent. Visit verizon.com slash hot Fios price. That's verizon.com slash hot Fios price. Fios, a network ahead. Come on, you boys call yourself fans? The game wasn't even close. All of them? Every single one? Well, there's only one game on cable right now. You jokers need to wake up. It's on. Only NFL Sunday Ticket gives you every minute of every game, every Sunday. A little enthusiasm, man. Nothing?
Upgrade to NFL Sunday Ticket and get every game every Sunday only with DirecTV. takes determination. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. In Michigan, visit knowhowtogomichigan.org. This is Nessie. Sports South. Temperatures in the 30s, wind chill in the 20s. But the band, they have their winter gear on as well. And, and that's what I'm doing. You just can't seem to do it. <laughs> it's a good thing, too. Ball at the 40-yard line, first and 10. Shotgun for Maryland. And Dave, David Meggett out to the 45-yard line, a five-yard pickup. There's a look at C.J. Brown, the redshirt sophomore. Of course, Danny O'Brien had the terrific freshman year last year. This year didn't have the same supporting cast around him and at times struggled. Brown got a chance to play. Ball's in the air and it's caught and intercepted. That's Sean Sylvia who shoved the receiver out of the way, then made the catch. Max Holloway with the deflection. But what an instinctive play by the red shirt freshman, Sean Sylvia. And Brown pulls this ball down and then goes back up again. And again, watch Sylvia just put, you see, there's no such thing as pass interference once that ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. You knock anybody down. Holloway gets the tip right there. And then Sylvia just pushes an intended Maryland receiver out of the way. First pick on the year for the redshirt freshman out of Dartmouth, Mass. And let's see Boston College now at the 25-yard line. Andre Williams in for his first series. And tailback for the Eagles. And Williams cuts back. He was hit initially by Lauren Gorey. Drags Gorey down to the 21-yard line. It's a gain of four. And obviously we're seeing Andre Williams and Merlin Finch. Remember Montel Harris coming back off of knee surgery, re-injured himself. They're going to apply for a medical hardship, a medical red shirt for Montel. So both Finch and Williams see an extended playing time during the year. Harris, one of the better running backs in the ACC conference. And Taj Kimball may see some time back there as well. A second down. There's a handoff to Alex Amadon going up the right side, and he's in. Touchdown, Boston College. Amadon on a reverse. He was in motion. He got the handoff in full flight, and he had enough traction keep to turn the corner and stay in bounds and stick it in. In talking about Amadon, Dave Brock called him, the offensive coordinator called him a whirling dervish. Great blocking all down that side and great speed by Amadon as he turns that corner. So Boston College turns a turnover into six points and now seven points. A 14-3 lead for the Eagles. And here's a look at uh, Amadon. He comes in motion underneath handoff and great job on the outside to seal everybody clear sailing for Amadon all the way for six. Boston College has come to College Park and put 14 points on the board. We've still got six minutes left in this first quarter. Last time they came here was in 2009. The Eagles had an early 7-3 lead. Dave Shinsky was actually playing quarterback and threw a 66-yard touchdown pass. But it was Montel Harris, the guy that you were talking about, that they're missing right now. Harris had a terrific day, 142 yards, and Boston College beat Maryland 19-17. That's our Buick video vault. Frank Spaziani has not had a lot of things go right this year, especially injury-wise. Both of these coaches with young teams to start the season, and then they've both lost key veterans to injuries which means the two deeps on both sides include 19 freshmen apiece. That's the most in the ACC. And both of these coaches, Etzel and Coach Spaz, would prefer to redshirt most incoming freshmen 
in these situations, given what's happened in the campaign of 2011, they've had to play those freshmen. Snow starting to fall now here at College Park, and we're told more snow is on the way. Short kick, and Maryland has it out near midfield. A reminder, you've got a chance to win the Dave's Hot and Juicy Cheeseburgers Ultimate College Weekend from Wendy's. Text Wendy's to South. That's Wendy's to 76884 for a chance to win four tickets to a college football championship game in Atlanta or Charlotte. Two nights hotel stay and a $500 gift card. Maryland with the football now. Brown still in at quarterback. Pickett up the middle and he bounces over to the left side to the 49 yard line it's a gain of two Luke Keekley and Max Holloway made the stop there's a look at Keekley they haven't said his name yet but we will he continues to lead the ACC and the country in tackles certainly a, a candidate for the Buckus Award second down at seven pickets and again it's Keekley who swallows him up and he had some help from Manny Aspria. Four tackles now already for Keekley. He had only 19 last week. Just must have taken the half off. How did he not win linebacker of the week of the ACC? Did they just stop giving the award I to him? I think they name it the Keekley Award now, so he's not eligible. I think Sean Spence won it last week from Miami. A little skinny post over the middle, caught there by Ronnie Tyler, and he's got enough for the first down for Maryland. A good throw by C.J. Brown. And Maryland moves the sticks. They're into Boston College territory. And again, you see Maryland in this hurry up offense. They don't huddle. They get their signals in from the sideline. And another ball batted down. This one, Brian Mahalik got a hand on it. And that'll bring up second down. Let's go down below to Jen Hildreth. It's, yeah, Rich Keekley definitely in the butt kiss conversation. In fact, the semifinalist for that award announced this week. Four ACC players on the list. Keekley, you'd have to think at the top of that list. Sean Spence on that list as well from uh, Miami. A legal procedure. Flags. Snap. Ball start. Offense. Number 73. Five yard penalty. We beat the down. Flags on the field, and it's going to cost them five yards. In fact, today in this game, we've got. Two of the best tacklers in all of college football. Keekley leads everybody, and of course, linebackers, that's his spot. And on the other side of the ball, Joe Villano leads all interior linemen as Wilson, or rather, a Brown, will keep it to the 41 yard line. Now, Joe Villano of Maryland is the leading tackler for a defensive lineman, and he does that from the inside. He's not a defensive end. And Keekley, of course, does it for Boston College. There's Joe. Villano looking to get another chance to get out there. Boston College has already put 14 points on the board. C.J. Brown up into the pocket, scrambling and throwing on the run. Another tip ball, but this one is caught. Marcus Leak. And he couldn't hold it. It's incomplete. Nice. Somebody got another hand on that football. Nice job by Brown to move around in the pocket. They'd like for him, candidly, Rich, to stay in that pocket a little bit more and throw the ball. As you mentioned, the ball tip, Leak unable to hold it on the outside. There was Steel DeVito who got a hand on it, came right into your picture. So Maryland in a punt formation at the Boston College 41, a real spread punt formation, and a high snap. That was almost a disaster. Ferrar made a nice catch, and his kick gets into the end zone. It's a 42-yard punt, but Ferrar did a nice job to keep that football from rolling deep into his own territory. Every exchange in weather like this is difficult, particularly cold with the combination of wet. That ball gets hard, it gets uh, it's slippery because of the precipitation. And whether you're centering the ball, a center exchange, throwing the ball, a handoff, a pitch, every exchange becomes an adventure. All that being said, we still have had 172 yards of total offense in this football game so far. With Boston College doing a lot of that work, and it's Rolandon Finch. Finch closing in on 60 yards on the ground. He's been the feature back, the sophomore out of New Albany, Indiana. And 
92 yards in that ball game against Virginia Tech. Good pinch. Yeah, we watched that game. We did that game, and Boston College played better than the final score of that game, which was 30 to 14. Finch this time nowhere to go. He's hit the line of scrimmage. Maurice Hampton made a nice tackle. Let's go back down to Jen Hildreth. Jen? Rich, I talked to Orlando Finch this week, and it's funny, he's known as what we saw in that touchdown run earlier, going right up the gut, a hard runner up the middle. And he told me when he was little, he used to try to sneak around the outside and go around the corner. And it was his dad, who also played running back in college, he said, come on, son, you need to lower the pads and run hard. Apparently, he listened to Pop. And, Jen, that was the difference against Virginia Tech. I remember Frank Spaziani telling you that going in at halftime, that was an adjustment he needed to make, and he certainly made it. Boston College is going to call a timeout here. Timeout, Boston College, first charge timeout. On a third down and five, Boston College with the lead and the ball. Frank Spaziani all bundled up. Kind of tough to hear those headphones with a hat and the hood on. So here we've got uh, snow and rain and wind. Next week, sunshine, baby. As we head down to Miami, Duke having a good day so far against Virginia Tech. And of course, Miami upset by Virginia on Thursday night. That is next week in our ACC College Football Saturday Showdown. Duke and Miami. If it snows down there, I'm going back home. If it snows down there, I'm moving. Virginia Tech, a 14-10 lead over Duke. That's getting late in the fourth quarter. Blue Devils playing well at home against the Hokies. Hokies come in still 12th in the BCS. There are your third down conversions on the season. Not the best for Boston College, but it's been an issue for the Maryland defense. 53% opponent conversion ratio on third downs against this Terrapin defensive unit. Finch in the backfield. Redding fires it out. Bobby Swigert's first catch, and he's right on the sticks as he slides out of bounds. Swigert was shut out last week against Virginia Tech. He dropped a couple of Redding throws early in the game, so it's nice to see him make a catch here. And this is a difficult throw. Doesn't pick up a, a lot of yardage. It does enough for the first down, but you're throwing that ball laterally. And there's another third down conversion against the Maryland defense. Todd Bradford, their defensive coordinator, told us that was something they needed to improve on and do it in a hurry. Finch had a nice convoy that shoved them ahead three yards to the 34-yard line. It's a gain of four. And you're seeing BC right now going with two and sometimes three tight ends. They're, they're signaling to this Maryland defense that we're probably going to keep the ball on the ground and we're probably going to come out right at you with it. Redding has not missed. He's three of three for 20 yards. Finch to the 37. Maurice Hampton made the stop. Short of the first down. Third down and three now for Boston College. If you've just joined us, yes, that's snow. And the field is very wet. It has rained for the last couple of days here in Maryland. It is a field that does not take moisture well at all. There's been a lot of talk of replacing the playing surface for next year. Remember, they had that uh, torrential downpour against Miami in their win to open the season here against the Hurricanes. Finch straight up the gut at the 40, falls to the 41. I think he's got the first down. And another third down conversion for Boston College. And BC Rich has had trouble running the football. Of course, they've been behind in a lot of their games and had to throw it. They're averaging just 114 yards per contest. But this Maryland defense has been gashed on the ground. They're giving up 215 yards each outing. And right now, BC's taking advantage of that. No place to hide from the elements here. 
Final seconds, first quarter. Boston College on the move. Finch cuts back. 45 to the 48. Another seven yard pickup. Mario Rousen made the stop for the Maryland Terrapins. Rolandon Finch now closing in on 75 yards on the day on 13 carries. And Boston College is going to head to the second quarter with a 14 3 lead. An impressive start for the Eagles. The Sean Sylvia interception set it up for Frank Spaziani. That second touchdown. And right now, the Eagles in control in the rain and the snow and the sleet. 14 3. BostonGlobe.com, made for your computer, tablet, and phone, and made to be read. Free for Globe subscribers and free for everyone this September. Experience BostonGlobe.com today. Listen up, America! Listen up, America. The recent health care bill will not take effect until at least 2014, leaving families and individuals lacking health insurance with no immediate solution to their concerns. But here's the good news. A health insurance hotline has been established to provide affordable health insurance for all uninsured Americans. And yes, uninsured Americans with pre-existing conditions. Call the health insurance hotline now and get you and your family covered today. Liverpool, the world's most historic soccer club, heads to the Hawthorns to face former manager Roy Hodgson, whose leadership is now transforming West Brom into a top-tier force. Tomorrow at 8, Liverpool-West Brom, the English Premier League match of the week on Nesson, presented by Ace Ticket. Hyundai drivers hear it all. Uh, be okay if I borrow your 40-mile-per-gallon accent? So, uh, got plans for your 40-mile-per-gallon Elantra tomorrow? How about we take your Sonata? It's a top safety pick. Hey, get your own Hyundai. You'll also get the Hyundai Assurance Trade-In Value Guarantee and America's Best Warranty. And now you can get your own 2012 Sonata with a 1.9% APR or a $199 a month lease. Get to your local Hyundai dealer and get your own Hyundai while the getting's good. .com. Wow, what's that? Oh, it's the new AT&T smartphone. <sighs> nice. I wish I could afford one. Yeah, I got a good deal. Look so. at that screen. Ooh. Fast, too, right? Oh, yeah. Last week, FITD. It streams movies. Real web browsing. Turn left now. <laughs> Look at this camera. Hold on. Let's get a photo. I'm listening to downloaded music. Oh, I can afford that. See ya. The AT&T Impulse 4G. For $29.99, there's no excuse not to get your own. AT&T. It's no coincidence the Toyota Tundra has received the most dependable large pickup award from J.D. Power & Associates. Not once. Not twice. But six years in a row. Now that's a statement no other truck can make. Save up to $67.50 on the 2011 Toyota Tundra Double Cab with 0% APR. The full-size Tundra from... Be part of every Bruins game on Nesson. Send pictures of you and your friends at the Garden or wherever you're enjoying the game to photos at Nesson.com. Your shot could appear during our live Bruins coverage. Follow Nesson on Twitter. Include hashtag Bruins and your tweet may be featured during the game or on our AT&T Twitter feed on Nesson Nation. And keep up with the play-by-play -play action on the Bruins live blog on Nesson.com. On your computer or on your mobile device, it's your chance to be part of this year's exciting Bruins season on Nesson. 6-6, six, six, keep my nets. Just a great day for football here. ACC College Football Saturday. Our Delta Fawcett's first quarter stats. Boston College on the ground. Of course, they forced that big turnover. Roland and Finch, 76 yards on 13 carries, has been the feature back for the Eagles. And the drive that the Eagles are on right now, this is their eighth play. They've moved it 30 yards in four minutes. Temperatures have dipped into the high 30s here. Wind chill into the 20s, and Finch is busted loose to the 35 and out of bounds at the 32 yard line. Eric Franklin made the stop and right now Roland and Finch closing in on 100 yards. Great job at the point of attack. Everybody with a hat on somebody else opens that crease up. Right there's a block there's another one and then Finch accelerates through that crease. 
for another double digit game. Look at that. Already 120 yards on the ground and Finch is at 95 yards already. On the reverse, this is the play in which they scored on. Alex Amadon knocked out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Darren Drakeford made the stop. Uh, not to correct you, Rich, but this is similar to the one they scored on. This one went a little deeper, and that allowed the Maryland defense to get in pursuit at a little better angle and drive the carrier out of bounds before the big game. Just another variation of trying to mix it up. Hey, no offense taken. Just slap me next time. Second down and four. Somebody's knee brakes came off. Finch. Down to the 22-yard line. That may have been a hand warmer. It might be. You're right. Both, can, can they bring it up here, please? Both, both teams are equipped with those hand warmers. They, uh, they are like belts with uh, the little warmers. You have the warming packets that can go in them. Boston College, to get ready for this, they knew what the forecast was. They knew what the field was going to be like. On Thursday, Coach Spaziani had him out in the mud. They practiced all day Thursday in the mud and the wet. And uh, according to the Boston College coaches and players, had a great old time on first and ten. Redding, lots of time to the corner. Larmon, the intended receiver, and it was a little too strong for the junior. Out of uh, Wapani, New Jersey. Nice job that time by Reddick. Knew he had time. Protection was good. Let this route develop through it, as you mentioned, just a little too far out. But great patience to allow Larmon to finish his route and very nearly stick it in the end zone. Reddick now three of four for 20 yards. Second down and 10. Every time they're in this formation, they like to go away from it. They do it again. And Finch finds some room, spins across the 15, and he gets inside the 14 to the 13. He needed to get to the 12 for the first down. Titus Till made the stop. But Boston College now with a very manageable third down and a yard. And what kind of confidence does Dave Brock have in this running game second and long? And they keep it on the ground and, and drive into the red zone. Two or three on third down for Boston College. And this a third and one. Again, every time they're in this formation, they like to go away. Let's see if it holds. Not nope, this time right up the middle. But he busts it back away and he gets the first down. And that's, you know, in talking to the Boston College coaches, the biggest adjustment they made against Virginia Tech was reading the blocking and making the cuts. Both Andre Williams and Finch did not do it in the first half. But in the second half, once they made that adjustment, they got big yardage, and they're getting it here again. And, and again, what they're talking about is, is literally what we used to call the cut back. You're going one way, reverse it back the other way. Oftentimes, that'll get you into trouble. But given the way the game is running, that's where the creases are and the big games re result from it. Randy Ensel can only watch. A 13 play drive that has arrived at the Maryland five Finch hesitating falls over left tackle Darren Drakeford made the stop. It's a gain of three. Second down and goal. Not a very complicated attack right this second. Can you get complicated on a field like this? Not so much, although I will tell you, it is as strange as it may sound, the offensive has the advantage in this because defensive people have to react, and that's when you lose your footing. Offensive people know where they're going. It certainly has looked like it with Boston College on the move. Finch now 118 yards. He's out of the game. Williams is behind Reddick as the snow continues to fall. Reddick to the end zone. Back of the end zone incomplete. He had his man there, Jonathan Coleman, but he ran out of room and ends up in the mud, and it's third and goal from the three. When they go back and look at this on the tape, Reddick will be the one that gets graded down on this. He needed to throw the ball either a little quicker or a little lower. He just led too far down the field, if you will, and the receiver could not get a foot down. Third and goal. Andre Williams still in the backfield. 
And he gets it. He's in. Touchdown. Boston College has three touchdowns already in this one. An impressive drive. And a 20 to 3 lead. A little counter action, and it was wide open. Rich, even I, myself, me, myself, and I could have gotten through that hole. Well, you needed the, the blocking of Bobby Vidal, Mark Spinney, Ian White, Emmett Cleary, and John Wetzel, the offensive line of Boston College. And then, yes, I, I do believe you could have scored. But you needed those five guys up front to get you in. And they've had a great day so far. 21-3. Hey, host, what you looking at? The game? Boy, done lost his mind. Let me educate you on something. This ain't no game. These are numbers. It's on! You know only NFL Sunday Ticket gives you every game every Sunday afternoon, live, right on your phone. Baby, look at the little man that showed me. Wow, aren't you just the cutest? Slow your roll, baby, slow your roll. Upgrade to NFL Sunday Ticket to go and take your team wherever you go. Let's compare 3D on Dish Network and DirecTV. DirecTV is leading the 3D revolution with more exclusive content than anyone. Live 3D sports, concerts, plus the latest Hollywood releases. In fact, DirecTV has three dedicated 3D channels. And Dish Network, zero. The most 3D content, another reason why 50 million people agree. Don't just watch TV, DirecTV. Sports South. The latest ACC news, highlights, and analysis, all in your pocket. Introducing the official ACC mobile apps presented by Haplin. Available on Android, iPhone, and iPad. Downloaded for free today. Visit the acc.com slash apps. Visit your local AutoZone now and get a Haviland oil change special. That's a 5-quart plus jug and an STP filter for $14.99. See store for details. Haviland, protect what matters. The path to financial freedom needs to be clearer. You want to be confident in your choices every step of the way. At bb and we've spent more than 135 years sharing our knowledge, helping clients manage their day-to-day -day finances and reach their long-term financial goals. When you're better informed, you head in a brighter financial direction. Talk to us today about where your money can take you and know how it feels to know more. bb and official bank of the ACC. Andre Aldridge with this game break. Duke trailing Virginia Tech 14-10 late third quarter, fourth and two at the 15. Sean Renfrey denied by Kyle Fuller. They couldn't get anything going in the fourth quarter. Vitek holds on to win it 14-10. Our thumb and in question, who is the best pro to come out of Maryland or Boston College? Norman Julius Esiason would like your vote. Give us your vote and uh, we'll update you throughout the contest. Back to our feature contest at Bird Stadium. It's Terps and Eagles, here's Rich Wallace. I'm sure Andre very warm in the studios. Right now, Maryland on their heels. Ronnie Tyler at his three. Tyler up the right side. And he runs headlong into Josh Keyes, who makes the stop. Let's go down to Jen Hildreth. Jen? Rich, not surprisingly, momentum on the side of the Eagles right now, and you can just feel it over here on their sideline. Everybody up. Colin Marmont has been going up and down the sideline going, woo, for about the past, I don't know, minute or two. Eagles definitely feeling good. It reminds me of last week. The speech from Frank Spaziani was, look, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of losing. I'm tired of not getting the wins. And you get a sense right now this Eagle team finally showing it on the field a little. Well, Jen, I, I think if you're Maryland, obviously you got to shake yourself a little. And Randy Edsel has put Danny O'Brien in the lineup. So C.J. Brown is quarterback so far. Here's O'Brien. And these certainly not easy conditions that he comes into with blowing sideways snow. 61% completion percentage. Brown had his moments. But the B.C. defense has made some big plays, including an interception by Sean Sylvia, which set up a touchdown. O'Brien on the run, and he throws a bullet on the sidelines, and it's incomplete. Quinton McCree 
was the intended receiver, and Al Lewis Jean was there to knock him out of bounds. While Brian, the, the passer of the duo, C.J. Brown much better on the ground. Danny, the ACC Offensive Rookie of the Year last year, much better through the air. You know, I think the one thing, though, that a lot of people don't realize that both Randy Edsel and Gary Croton told us is he's good outside the pocket. He can get out and throw on the run. O'Brien in trouble, escapes, now throws to the sideline. It's tipped and dropped and incomplete. And that ball was a duck coming out of O'Brien's hand. Marcus Leak was the intended receiver. And there's the escapability that they talked about, said that he could get outside the pocket. And, and when he's in the pocket, he's very, very effective. Now, he doesn't have the same weapons this year as he had last year. But delivering the ball down the field is something that he is very good at doing, although that particular pass that we just saw in live action, it came out of his hand sideways almost. Nick Ferrara, see the spread punt formation by Maryland. And Ferrara almost has it blocked. I don't see how it wasn't blocked. Swigert makes the fair catch. I'll tell you what. Manny Espria. How'd he miss it? I think he may have overrun it. He did. He blocked it behind. He kicked it behind him. Get ready to rock and twist your way to sizzling hot abs with a brand new Ab Rocket Twister. If you can rock in a chair, Ab Rocket Twister can launch you on your way to amazing abs. All you do is just rock and twist. It is that simple, rocking and twisting and hitting those abs. I've lost over 50 pounds and 21 inches. It's changed my life dramatically. I, I just feel great. Forget traditional floor crunches. They strain your neck and lower back. And most ab machines are big, bulky, and only work in one direction. The secret to how the Ab Rocket Twister targets your abs so effectively comes from its unique exercise efficiency technology. It starts by offering resistance on the way down and on the way back up for double the impact. So you get double the abs sculpting with no wasted motion. Plus, it makes the perfect Pilates assister, making difficult moves easier and pain-free. The padded rolling cushions support your neck and back, so it's like getting a massage while you flatten and firm your entire core area. And check this out. Just release the twister pin and blast away those unwanted love handles. With the twist feature, it really does target your obliques, and you can really feel that burn, which I like. Call now and get the all-new Ab Rocket Twister, three levels of resistance bands, the Rockin' Fat Blastin' DVD set, meal plan, and cardio dance party. Yours to try for only $14.95. And don't forget to ask your operator about the Ab Rocket Flex Master so you can easily transform your Ab Rocket Twister into a full-body training machine. But hold everything. Order in the next two minutes, and we'll deliver your Ab Rocket Twister for free. That's right, free shipping. Over 2 million people have already achieved amazing results with the Ab Rocket. So don't miss this special introductory offer. Call and order right now. To order, call 1 800 980 6800. Call now. ACC College Football Saturday brought to you by ATT, by Haviland, and by Geico. You can't have a football game this weekend without a pumpkin shot. The official pumpkin of the ACC. I like it. That was before the snow started falling. Now the snow is falling and BC is running and it's Andre w Williams who's got a 12 yard pickup. Boston College has just dominated this football game on the ground. They have 11 first downs already. A 21 3 lead. Well, Landon Finch is already over 100 yards. He's at 118. And Williams, with that run, now has 19 yards on three carries. And all of that directly attributable to that offensive line. It's 164 yards already on the ground for Boston College. Williams picks up maybe a yard. Here's a look at the at the big guys up front, what they've done so far. And a lot of this running game has been north and south in between the tackles. They've gotten outside successfully a couple of times, but they have gashed this Maryland defense right straight up the middle. 
And it's a young offensive line. As you, you look across, Wetzel, Cleary. Cleary's a junior. Vidaro, as is Wetzel. Bobby Vidaro, redshirt freshman at guard. Ian White, a old sophomore. Guy. Old guy in the middle, though. Yeah, Spinney is a senior. Williams, straight up the middle. Gets across midfield into Maryland territory, the 49 yard line. Lauren Gorey, the middle linebacker, made the stop. Another third down spot. And as we told you, Todd Bradford, the defensive coordinator for Maryland, said it's been an issue for Maryland all season long, stopping opponents on third down. And today, Boston College is four of five on third down. Let's see what they've got cooked up. It's third down and six. Keep your eye right here. See what Volano does. Joe Volano, the great defensive tackle. Reddick has time. His slant pattern was behind Larmon and broken up. Cameron Chisholm, the senior out of Washington, came across and broke up the pass. And Boston College, for just the second time, is going to have to punt. Ryan Quigley into the ball game. In games like these, Rich, first down almost becomes your third down. You run your downs in reverse. Because if you can't get good yardage on first down, it makes it very difficult. Ronnie Tyler is deep. Quigley angles it towards the sideline. Tyler, a fair catch, called for and made. And a face full of snow at the same time for Tyler. 21-3, Boston College. This is a public announcement. CNNMoney.com reports that in some areas of the country, buyers are scooping up homes for as little as $1,000. Foreclosures are at an all-time high. We're CRN, and since 1995, we've helped people just like you find bargain-priced homes. Call the number on your screen to learn how to get your extensive list of foreclosed homes for free. These homes have been foreclosed, confiscated, or repossessed. Every house must be sold. The government and banks are very motivated to sell these homes quickly, so listings may not always remain available in all areas. So act now. And right now, CRN is offering a home rebate of up to $1,000 in cash. And don't forget to ask about how to qualify for an additional rebate of up to $2,500. If you currently rent a house or apartment, you may call now and learn how to receive your free list of these homes. All others may call tomorrow. Every house must be sold. This is a public announcement. Call 1-800-792-9131. That's 1-800-792-9131. I don't want to get up. I don't want to go to work. I hate mornings. Great, I have 20 minutes. No time for coffee. Hello, my friend. Can't get it together in the morning? Try 5-Hour Energy. It's simple, effective, and unlike coffee, it's ready right now. No waiting, no hassle. Let's do this. 5-Hour Energy, the no-wait, no-hassle way to a great morning. It never ends for Hyundai drivers. 31 MPG is awesome. Any chance you'd lend me your Tucson? Since it's a top safety pick, I'd feel a lot better in your Santa Fe. We can all fit in your Veracruz. You drive. Hey, get your own Hyundai. You'll also get the Hyundai Assurance Trade-In Value Guarantee and America's Best Warranty. And now, you can get your own 2011 Santa Fe with 1.9% APR or a $269 a month lease. So get it together and get your own Hyundai at your local dealer. Hardy's Chicken Tender Box game summary. Alex Amadon had that reverse for a 21-yard touchdown run. Orlando Finch has 120 himself on the ground, and Boston College has been terrific offensively. You saw that lone fan at the very top of the stands, 836 left in this first half. Daniel Bryan throws it away. It's Keekley at the 30 who has the interception. Second pick by Boston College. They turned the last one into seven points. C.J. Brown has thrown one and now Daniel Bryan has thrown one. Second pick on the year by my count for Keekley. He starts right there. Turns back inside and it so Brian just doesn't get the ball high enough. You got to throw that ball over the linebacker and kind of teardrop it into the tight end. Keekley with four tackles and an interception. Sean Sylvia had the other pick. That Sylvia pick set up the touchdown run 
by Amadon. Landed Finch. Another nice hole. And he's got a healthy five yard pickup. Let's go back down to Jen. Jen, you staying warm down there, by the way? I'm trying. You see, I find the places to go. BC generating their own heat. That's good. This is what they've got going on. Both teams have these heaters. Maryland has the advantage of heated benches as well in their sideline. But that heater you're looking at, one of them actually went out on the Boston College sideline. They were trying to get it started last time I was over there. So as I said, good thing the Eagles generating a little heat of their own right now. And the tough part, everybody, in this football game is that it was wet and now it's snowing so it's a really damp wow. snow and it's Finch inside the 10 doesn't seem to bother him he lost the football it's still loose still loose and Maryland has it at the three well landed Finch with a big run but as he came to earth the ball came out Alex Twine made the eventual recovery, but it probably changed hands three or four times once Finch coughed it up. Well, here's the tail end of it. I thought the ball had come out when he hit the ground, but it clearly comes out before then. Larmon's in there, tries to pick it up. Alex Amadon, number 83, is in there, but ultimately, Maryland ends up with it. Mario Rousen forced the fumble. Megat. Across the 15, David Meggett has a 13-yard pickup. Here's another look. Here's a better look at it. How many touches here? There's the ball on the ground. There's two players. Two players. Three. One digs it out there. Ball's continuing to go this way. Five. There it is. Nobody want the pumpkin between the legs. It's about six guys that had a shot at it. Here we go. Meggett bouncing it outside. And all of a sudden, Maryland finding some room on the ground. David Meggett, the senior, Sean Sylvia, made the stop. I mentioned that he's about 10 pounds lighter. I, this is as quick as we've seen Meggett in a long, long time, even on this bad footing. 23 yards on the carry. Justice Pickett comes into the ball game to take over for Meggett after that run. And it's Pickett who tries the right side, but uh, there's Keekley to swallow him up and drop him at the 45-yard line. If you've just joined us, yes, it is snowing. We were told by a reliable ACC source that this is, in all likelihood, the first snow game in October in ACC history. O'Brien scrambling, gets outside, and he's got himself a first down. He's out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And that goes back to what you talked about that, that maybe a lot of people didn't know, ourselves included, is that Danny O'Brien can, can motor as well. He's just not known as a running quarterback. Now, there's LeBron James, Terry Bradshaw, and a few other signals. And I'm not sure what the play is, but it certainly is a, a colorful way to send your plays in. Justice Pickett with the carry. Let's go down to Jen. To Jen. Jen? Rich, I talked to Danny O'Brien's high school coach, Todd Willard, and he told me, you know what? Danny can run more than people can think. He actually had over 700 yards his senior year in high school, had a couple of 100-yard rushing games. So he has more mobility. He just prefers to use his arm in general. Well, and the, the system under Ralph Friedgen last year was more of a pocket system. The system this year that Randy Edsel has brought along with Gary Croton gets the quarterback uh, and moves him around a little bit more. This is going nowhere. Keekley blows it up in the backfield. And Quentin McCree is going to lose about six yards. That ball was centered too quick, Rich. You want this ball to be centered right as the runner is approaching the quarterback. Way too much time for the defense to react to it. You don't need to give Keekley any advantages. Six tackles now for Keekley to go with an interception. And Maryland drive has stalled a bit here at the Boston College 45. It's third down and 15. O'Brien in the shotgun. This is his second series. Steps up in the pocket, dumps it out. Megan couldn't make the catch. It was a little high for him. Good pressure by Josh Keyes. And that was pressure brought by Boston College. They were rushing just three. And so Maryland's drive, which featured Meggett and a little bit of O'Brien as well, 
is stop cold at the 45 yard line. Not a bad situation right here, Rich, to do something a little unorthodox. Well, you, you see the, the punt formation is spread as they are. Ferrara drops it, picks it up, and gets it away. Remember, his last one was almost blocked. And then Swigert makes a, a fair catch with some heat on him at the 11. Little weather here at College Park has made this one a fun one. training bike of the Tour de France, the Proform TDF. The first ever indoor training bike that delivers the thrill and challenge of the real tour. A 20% incline and a 20% decline. You experience exactly what the road does. Powered by Google Maps, you choose any road in the world and the TDF follows it. TDF is the training advantage you've been waiting for. Push the tempo through the Pyrenees, break away from the peloton, and attack Mont Ventoux. You decide, and the official training bike of the Tour takes you there. The only cyclists training like this are already on the Tour. So we went to the Tour de France to show off the TDF advantage. The training bike to map your ride almost perfect. You can complete the stage before you've actually arrived. With Google Maps, you experience classic climbs like Alpe d'Huez. I'd use Google Maps every time. Real road, real resistance, and shifting. Would have been great to have a bike like this to train and practice beforehand. You'll spend the off-season riding your own Tour de France. And when the season starts, your competition won't know what hit them. Plus, with a built-in power meter, you'll always know your exact output. I spent about 3,500 US dollars on my power meter. So trading with power for me is uh, a huge benefit. No matter where, no matter the season, no matter what the weather. Well, one of the hardest things about living where I live is indeed the weather. Attack the world's famous climbs indoors. The grand depart has begun. Break away from the pack and call or go online to get zero down and a free upgrade to rush shipping on the new Proform TDA. Your tour starts now. TNT. Those locker room shots obviously were taken on a, a much warmer day here at College Park. The band and uh, everybody else trying to stay warm. Snow, winds of up to 25 miles per hour, a very wet and muddy track. But Boston College has thrived in this environment. Maybe it was that Thursday practice in the mud and the wet. Of oh. Chestnut Hill, it's loose and Mellon has a shot at it. Who's got it? Second fumble for Boston College. In fact, their last two plays have been fumbles. Cameron Chisholm, and it's Finch again who put it on the ground. He runs right up the back of one of his linemen, and then it just kind of pops out of his arm right there. And Chisholm ended up with a football right there. Is actually caused by him riding on the back of that offensive lineman. Now let's see if Maryland can cash it in now. O'Brien drops the snap, and that play goes nowhere. We're really seeing the elements with the skill position players right now cause a lot of problems. And, and to be fair, we would have expected to have seen this earlier in the ball game. They've done a good job up to this point protecting themselves. This is Danny O'Brien's third series. C.J. Brown started the game for Maryland at the quarterback spot. Combined, they've not thrown the ball well at all. Just two of ten. O'Brien rolling on second down and long. He fires it to the sideline. Quentin McCree gains about three yards. This is going to bring up third down and about 12 for Maryland. And Maryland just two of six on third down in this ball game and they need to pick this up and or score because a field goal really doesn't do them much good in this situation. Bill McGovern's defense for Boston College trying to slow down 
And this Maryland offense off a second straight turnover for BC. This one deep in Boston College's own territory. O'Brien in the shotgun on third and 12. Swing pass, Megat, and he dropped that one. Fourth down. And let's see if Maryland tries to get the three points. A little bit behind him, and Megat couldn't couldn't bring it in. And I think if, if Maryland had picked up a little bit of yardage here, they'd be much more inclined to think about going for it on fourth down. Nick Ferrara has hit. You can see that uh, Michael Tart, Tim Downs, also important in this equation, the holder and the long snapper. Ferrara hit from 33. This from 34. The kick a low line drive and he missed it. And that's why field goals, extra points, punts are not gimmies on a day like today in College Park, Maryland. Let's see if he had good footing. Looks like he just stubs his toe into the ground. That certainly wasn't fluid. He looked like uh, as he turned to his holder and one real happy with the hold. Well, early on, the ball was on the ground, then they did a good job of holding on to it, but here late, it's been all over the place. Boston College now with 3.45 left. Andre Williams on the ground. Landon Finch has had a big day, 145 yards, but he fumbled on his last two carries. And so Williams gets this series, at least to start this series. Second down and seven. Chase Reddick hasn't had to throw the ball much at all. He's just three of six. Williams. Nowhere to go. Keith Bowers there to make the stop. Lauren Gorey made the first hit on him. We check in with Jen Hildreth. Well, as you can tell, very slippery out there. They did bring twice the amount of balls, 24 balls to this game. The guys are trying to keep him dry over here. They added extra people to come try to dry these balls off. They've been putting him in front of the heaters trying to keep him dry. But it's uh, it's pretty much a losing battle out here. It is very wet. And, Jen, that's 24 for Maryland, right? Boston College, you can bring as many footballs as you want. And that's more info than I've got. I know the Maryland side. That's right. The 24 balls from Maryland, they told me they provided for this game. Whether that counts for both teams or just Maryland, I'm not 100% sure. Well, each team brings their own balls. And if you're Maryland, all your balls are in the, in the locker room. You can go get as many as you want. I think the typical uh, allotment is somewhere around 12. But in situations like this, 12, yep. 9 to 12. Yeah, situations like this, you, you want to use as many. Uh, that haven't been out there as you can. Hey, Jen, how's that heated bench working for Maryland down there, by the way? I know that's a popular nice. spot. Yeah, I, I really wanted to kind of sneak out there and sit on it, but I haven't done that yet. But, um, I mean, I put my hand on it, and it is something else. I tell you what, the guys get over here, and they just kind of, there's a sigh of relief as all the steam comes off of them, like, yes. But that may be why you see Boston College standing a little bit more. They don't have that on their side. No, you're, you're not required to uh, supply it for both sides. But if, if you wanted to bring it with you, I guess you could. Third down and 10 now for Boston College. We're under three minutes left. First half screen pass set up. Reddick dumps it, and it's incomplete. He had a man out there. It was Finch, and Maurice Hampton hurried him. And so Maryland's going to get the football back. And it should be in good field position as the snow starts to come down even harder now. Is it coming down harder or is it just bigger flakes? Well, it's not as sideways as it was about 10 minutes ago. Quigley to punt. Ronnie Tyler back in Maryland territory. It's a good kick. I mean, a booming kick. Fair catch called for and made. Back at the 35-yard line, it's a 45-yard kick in inclement weather. That's impressive stuff from the Boston College punter, Ryan Quigley. 
And with that cold weather, those balls, it's like kicking a rock. Now, they get hard as they can be. Not much has worked offensively for Randy Edsel and the Maryland Terrapins. If you're Gary Croton, where do you go from here in his final 244? Well, right now, I don't do anything to hurt myself. Certainly don't want to lay the ball on the ground again. O'Brien from the pocket, crossing pattern. Kenny Boykins makes the catch. He's going to pick up six yards before he's knocked down. Both teams have two timeouts left as we enter the final two and a half minutes of the first half. A first half dominated by Boston College. Maryland has a field goal and a missed field goal. O'Brien fires it to the sidelines. McCree makes the catch, finds himself some room, and spins across the 50 to the 49-yard line. And now Maryland has a little bit of rhythm on a couple completions from Danny O'Brien. McCree with a huge game against Florida State, had nine receptions for 177 yards against the Seminoles. First and 10, approaching two minutes. O'Brien, lots of time. Dumps it out of the backfield, a sliding catch by Boykins. That's at the 45-yard line. And it will be second down and five. Well, I think we answered our question. Gary Croton said, we're just going to throw it. We're going to ignore the conditions. They're throwing it short, and they're throwing it with success, although that one was dropped by Marcus Leak. Leak has not had a good day. He's had a couple of balls, a couple that were tipped, but that one was a, a clear shot right to him that he's not been able to hold. Leak is a true freshman true out freshman. of Charlotte, North Carolina. Starting to see some increased playing time is Leak. Now in third down, O'Brien steps up, fires it over to the flats in a good play. Pickett was trying to hold it. And coming up to get him was Donnie Fletcher. And let's see if Maryland goes for it here on fourth down and five. Looks downfield, steps up, throws the outlet. Just can't hang on. The fans that have come out here and braved this weather are clamoring for the Terrapins to go for it. Randy Edsel calls a timeout to talk about it on fourth down and five. The problem here is it's, uh, I mean, it's close to midfield. If you don't get it, there's a lot of time for Boston College. But of course, when you're two and five and you're going against a, a Boston College team that has just one win on the season, you might as well gamble. What, what, what are the odds? What, are, what is at stake? You're not going to lose much. You may have a great deal to gain. And it's been a, a trying year for Randy Edsel. We told you a young team that has lost some veterans in terms of injuries. They have 19 freshmen on their two deeps. They and Boston College both with 19 freshmen on the two deeps, the two youngest teams in the ACC. And when you lose the, uh, the likes of a, of a Kevin Dorsey, uh, Andrew Ganella, Kenny Tate, Matt Robinson, Matt Robinson, all guys that were supposed to be big time players. And you're in a in sort of a, a rebuilding type mode with young players. It can really hurt. So here's the fourth and five. O'Brien in trouble and he's dropped. Ball is loose. I think it's an incompletion. Max Holloway coming up, applying the pressure. And Boston College will get the football. Just one-on-one -on -one blocking on the outside, and Holloway just dips that shoulder and continues to drive in, cuts that angle down, and gets right on. Now, now Boston College does have the football at their own 44-yard line. Chase Reddick's got a minute 24. But, of course, he's got not only Maryland's defense, but also the elements. Two timeouts at his disposal on first and 10. They'll keep it on the ground. Finch straight ahead across midfield to the 49-yard line. Eric Franklin made the stop. Is Boston College in a hurry-up mode, or are they going to huddle up? They're not moving swiftly. No, they're, they're in the huddle and taking their time right now. 
with a 21 3 lead and a minute left in the first half. Finch again. Look how many hands are on that football. That'll stop the clock because he's got a first down. Oh, let's wait a minute on the spot. He had to get to the 46. And now they do stop the clock. They're going to bring on the chains and give a little measurement here. Frank Spaziotti is upset. He felt the clock should have been stopped once the ball was down because it was that close to a first down. But they let about 10 seconds run off the clock while they eyeballed it. Snow in the northeast and snow expected throughout the afternoon and into nighttime here in the Washington D.C. Baltimore area. And of course we can sit here and look at the snow and and say what a great atmosphere this is for college football. But the uh, working men and women of our ACC crew who are out of the elements are having to uh, brave it and hang in there. And so far, I haven't seen a smudge on one lens. The audio is crisp and clear, but I don't see anybody smiling. <laughs> you will when the game's over and everybody gets to hit. There you go. There. You're, you're wow. not even in the snow. Don't even wave. <laughs> Redding fires it into the flats. Amadon with the catch, and he's to the 39-yard line. BC will take a timeout here. They've got one more left. Amadon, of course, scored on that reverse early in the first half. The hardest adjustment in situations like this, what, what few, only a couple that I've been in, is when you go in at halftime and you have to convince yourself to come back out for the second half. Now, Boston College has the football at the 40 yard line. Do you even figure in field goal range in these conditions or are you thinking about let's take a shot for the end zone. I, I, I think you take a shot for the end zone uh, because it's so easy for a bad snap ball a place kick to be blocked those types of things. One more time out for Boston College second down and three at the Maryland 39. You can see how well BC has protected Redding. He's one of the cleanest Eagles. Play action. Redding. They're going to take their shot, and he's going to the end zone. Amadon got turned around, and it's incomplete. It'll bring up third down. Cameron Chisholm was the intended, or was the uh, cover man and it was Larmond who was the intended receiver. I like the call though. Twenty seconds left. And a third down and three. Keep it on the ground. Finch is hitting the backfield and dropped. And with a 21 3 lead. And fourth down coming up. BC is just going to let the clock run out. And head to a much warmer locker room. Let's see. Now BC called the timeout. I believe BC called the timeout with one second left. Because they figure, you know what? It's fourth down. Let's just throw it into the end zone and see. And I like that. I mean, rather than say, okay, let's go to the locker room. If you throw it in the end zone, you got a chance of something good to happen, a much lesser chance of something bad to happen. Well, I'm we'll disagree with you there. You got a much better chance of bad things happen because you got to have a successful exchange. Mm -hmm. The quarterback can rear back the throw it, and the ball comes out of his hands. I, I go with I go with letting the clock go and let's go get in the heat. See now that that's a very appropriate halftime show uh, warming up right now. I wonder if I could put my shoes on each end of that. My feet are cold. Your feet are cold. What feet? 
Thanks, Baziani. You know, we're up in the booth. I, I, Jen, I, Jen is the one that's down on the field. I, I've got nothing on her. That is true. Yeah, she'll have a uh, interview here shortly with Coach Baziani. And uh, let's see it. You got Williams splitting out to one side and three receivers to the other side. Reddick is four of nine. He certainly has the arm strength to get it down there. Maryland will rush three. Reddick steps up. Gonna lob it towards the end zone. Swigert is there and it's intercepted at the two yard line. And that's how the first half ends on an interception by Cameron Chisholm. For Chisholm, his third pick of the season. But Boston College, a very impressive first half as they come out and hang 21 points up on the board. A 21-3 lead over the uh, Maryland Terrapins. The Terps at home in the cold and the snow. And Boston College on the road looking good right now at the half. Let's go down to Jen Hill. Good, Jen. Coach, this weather can make things messy, challenging. What's the key to surviving and succeeding in this? Well, once again, you got to control the ball and you got to hold on to it and, uh, and, and 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 try to give yourself a, a chance to be successful on your plays. But it's certainly challenging. Sounds simplistic. Hold on to the ball. What do you do to make sure you do a better job of that than you did the last couple times? Well, once again, it's uh, it's a matter of focus, and uh, you know, Deuce has been good with the ball and uh, he's overcome that. But uh, you know, he's got two here so you know, we got to make sure we take care of it. All right thank you coach. Rich? <laughs> he looked like he's ready to get in the locker room and get warm. So are we. 21-3 at the half. Boston College on top on an ACC College Football Saturday. ACC College Football Saturday brought to you by Hardee's. By CPI Security. By North Carolina Education Lottery. And by Fiat. Attention to Pew hip replacement patients. If you have had complications following hip replacement surgery, it may have been caused by a defective hip replacement implant. Depew Orthopedics has recalled hip replacement systems due to defects. If you or a loved one have had hip replacement surgery and needed to have the surgery redone or you have had other complications, call the Rely On Group now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. If you were fitted with a Depew hip implant and you suffered hip pain, failure of the hip replacement joint, or other medical complications, you may be eligible for a cash award. Call the Rely On Group right now to be connected with an experienced attorney for a free consultation and to see if you may qualify for financial compensation. There is absolutely no risk on your part. You don't owe us a penny unless we are successful. If you or a loved one has had a Depew hip implant and it has been removed or it is causing you pain or other complications, call the Reliant Group at 1-800-969-0528. Verizon 4G LTE, America's fastest and most reliable 4G network in over 160 cities. Verizon, built so you can rule the air. Some people love their cars almost as much as they love their team. How about them dogs? Tell you this is the best truck we've ever built, but we'd rather you come in and decide for yourself. Because with a powerful and efficient available 390 horsepower Hemi V8 engine and an unsurpassed powertrain limited warranty that covers you up to 40,000 miles more than Ford F-150, Ram should be an easy enough decision for you. Or now get 0% financing for 60 months plus 2,000 total bonus cash on Ram 1500 SLT Crew Cab. During my years at Boston College, I won a Goldwater Scholarship to pursue research on the human brain. I was named a delegate to the UN Conference on Climate Change. I won a Truman Scholarship to improve the way medicine is practiced. We launched a startup to help reduce energy consumption. 
I won an NCAA award for helping teens in developing countries. I research immigration trends on three continents. Together, we are working to make the world a better place. What will you do? Each of the past four games between Maryland and Boston College have been decided by seven points or less. Each team has won two of those ball games. But right now, after two quarters of play, it's Boston College with a comfortable lead by a score of 21 to 3. And with that, we say welcome to the Sprint Halftime Report from our ACC College Football Saturday studios here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Andre Aldridge. We'll get you back to College Park for the start of the second half of action shortly. Right now, though, we want to check some other ACC action, and we're going to start with the leaders of the Coastal division that would be Virginia Tech on top of the coastal with a uh, three and one record taking on Duke and well Logan Thomas loops this to Eric Martin for the score and they're on top seven love feeling good about things second quarter same score here comes Duke Desmond Scott runs it in from three yards out and it's all even after the extra point at seven same score Josh Ogles he runs it in for a one yard score Hokies on top by seven 14 to seven Hokies ranked 12th in the current BCS rankings last chance for Duke fourth and two going forward here Sean Renfrey back to pass but it's picked off there by Mr. Rivers and well they go on to win it by a final score of 14 to 10 148 yards rushing for David Wilson in this game as members of the ACC Virginia Tech improves a 14 and 0 in conference games played in the state of North Carolina all right hey speaking of North Carolina Tar Heels hosting Wake Forest first quarter no score second and five Wake five from seven yards out Bren Renner to Giovanni Bernard. Tar Heels take the seven love lead. Then later, same score, third and goal for the Tar Heels. Renner finds Eric Highsmith in the end zone. Let's make it 14 0. Home club feeling sky blue. Is that the sky blue colors? Right, we have a lot of Tar Heels here in the studio. All right, second quarter, Wade trying to get on the board. Brandon Pendergrass punches it in. And now they're within seven. We take a look at the numbers right here, and it's a 14 to 10 lead for the home club. Demon Deacons looking to beat the Tar Heels for the third consecutive time. That hasn't happened in over 20 years. Unbelievable. Wait, four and one in the Atlantic Division behind 5-0 Clemson, which plays later Georgia Tech. Our coming in question, who's the best pro to come out of either of our featured schools uh, in the game today, Maryland or BC? Is it Norman Esiason? Is it Vernon Davis? Randy White of Maryland? Art Donovan, the old timer from BC, the Blue you're Matt Asselbeck. Just text your vote to South. That's 76884. We will update you a little bit later in the Sprint Halftime Report and in the second half of our game. All right, folks, take a look at the action. How about Landon Finch busting through from 18 yards out? His club up 21 to 3 at the break. Back with more right after this. Stay tuned. We're good at tailgating, but to be great, well, you need a little coaching. That's why I come in. Coach, are we running super cold activation today? Always, Gary. Only Coors Light tells you when your beer goes from cold to super cold. Frost brewed on three. One, two, three. Frost brewed. Ice down those Coors Lights, baby. Ice. When it comes to big refreshment, we could all use a little coaching. Nice crossing pattern, Randy. We're tailgating at the next level. Don't do it. Don't you do it. Frost brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. A little help, guys. What happens when you use peak motor oil? You get premium performance and can save up to 10 gallons of gas every time you change your oil. So any car runs like a 10, even if it's more like a 6. You're not just changing oil, you're saving gas. Put peak motor oil in, save on gas. Midnight on Nesson. This is Nesson, home of the Boston Bruins. There are
now through Sunday, buy one item and get a second at 50% off at the grand opening of the largest XL store ever on 800 Bald Hill Road in Warwick. Hey, George? Yeah? Are one of your sticky notes? Yeah. Come on in. You know, I'm just gonna write it on my hand. Thanks. Sure? Yeah. Watch the game at Fridays. Great food, cold beer, and your favorite drinks, even late. Because in here, it's always Friday. Build inviting solar powered homes and the entrepreneurial spirit to launch Google, Under Armour, and the next great business. We are Terrapins. We challenge convention, start movements, embrace the impossible. And inside each of us is the potential for world changing genius. The University of Maryland. Fear the turtle. ACC football is brought to you by Sprint. Boston College has already established a season high in rushing during the first half of this game. 202 yards rushing on the ground so far, and they lead at the break by a score of 21-3 over Maryland. Hey, things have been pretty tight between Florida State and North Carolina State recently. They had split their last 10 games, with eight of those being decided by 10 points or less. So this afternoon in Tallahassee, the Seminoles wanted to change that tune in a big, big way. First quarter, E.J. Manuel running the option with the pitch to Devontae Freeman. Seven yards later, it's a touchdown for the home club, and it's a seven-love lead just like that. Ten-nothing now, Lonnie Pryor takes a handoff. He goes from eight yards out. Strong man, Hercules, Hercules, Hercules! And it's 17 to nothing in favor of the home club. Same score, minute left in the half. Manuel with a laser to Kenny Shaw. Nice night at the afternoon at the office for Manuel. He scored feet through over 300 yards, and here he hits Greg Dent from 26 yards out. 34 0 Seminoles roll, register their first shutout of the season. Manuel 25 to 34 for those two touchdown strikes, and uh, Florida State their fifth win of the season. Nice work for them, just 166 yards of offense for the Wolfpack. Yikes. Quick timeout for us. Boston College's Alex Amadon takes this handoff 21 yards later. Yeah, it's a touchdown for the visitors in our feature contest. Back with more of the Sprint Halftime Report right after this. Hyundai drivers hear it all. Uh, be okay if I borrow your 40 mile per gallon accent. So, uh, got plans for your 40 mile per gallon Elantra tomorrow? How about we take your Sonata? It's a top safety pick. Hey, get your own Hyundai. You'll also get the Hyundai Assurance Trade-In Value Guarantee and America's Best Warranty. And now you can get your own 2012 Sonata with a 1.9% APR or a $199 a month lease. Get to your local Hyundai dealer and get your own Hyundai while the getting's good. Nothing compares to a delicious Papa Gino's pizza. Except getting to watch the bees claw, grind, and battle their way to a repeat championship. You just sit back and enjoy your Papa Gino's pizza. Attention, mothers and fathers of children with birth defects. The antidepressant drug Paxil has been linked to heart, brain, and spine damage, and many other horrible birth defects in newborns. Birth defects are a family's worst nightmare. It's a terrible thing for a family to bear. If you are a mother or father and your child has a birth defect, the drug Paxil may be to blame. I'm attorney Bob Goldwater. The manufacturer Paxil has agreed to pay more than $1 billion to settle hundreds of Paxil birth defect lawsuits. Call the Goldwater water law firm right now for a free legal consultation you and your child may be entitled to financial compensation if you took the drug Paxil while you were pregnant and your baby was born with a birth defect call us right now you and your child may be entitled to financial compensation call the goldwater law firm right now call the goldwater law firm right now at 1-800-652-7474 to see if we can help call 1-800-652-7474 that's 1-800-652-7474 the puck drops here with inside access before every game. Plus, live commentary and previews from the home of the Bruins. WB Mason Bruins face off live before every game on Nesson. On Sports South. And there he goes! Wow. UTEP takes on Rice at 3.30. Then at 7, Missouri battles Baylor. And at 10.30, it's Oregon-Washington. It's all part of Saturday in the South. 
Presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. All around the South. Much more going on around the SEC, ACC, and Conference USA. We're breaking it down. Why three? They're hard to find. With a little personality. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. The new college football show, Thursdays on Fox Sports South. If you missed the Dan Patrick Show, you've missed this. This is the Dan Patrick Show. It is good. Woo! Breaking sports news. Went to Dallas to cover the Super Bowl and the X Games broke out. High profile athletes and celebrities. Charlie Sheen. I love every cell of your perfect body. What's not to love, Dan Patrick? And of course, the Danettes. Yeah. The Dan Patrick Show, weekdays. You're watching Fox Sports South. ACC football is brought to you by Sprint. Two quarters are in the books from College Park, Maryland. And, well, we want to get you to our thumb it in question. Who was the best pro to come out of either Maryland or Boston College? And the results say by far it's Dub Flutie. So we appreciate you voting. You can continue to text your answer to 76884. And we will continue to update these results to you throughout the second half of this game. All right, everybody. After a short break, we'll get you back out to Bird Stadium in College Park. Rich, Keith, and Jen will have the second half between Maryland and Boston College. Stay tuned. People choose 5-Hour Energy now over 9 million times a week for lots of reasons. It's a nutritional supplement that really works. Its key ingredients are found in everyday food like avocados, broccoli, and bananas, or already in you. It contains about as much caffeine as a cup of the leading premium coffee, zero sugar, four calories. What will your reason be for choosing 5-Hour Energy? Its effectiveness? It's beneficial ingredients. There's only one way to know. Try it today. Yes! I host a pretty good game, but to be the best, I needed a little coaching. That's where I came in. The world's best party needs the world's most refreshing beer. Stack that Coors Light. Make those mountains blue. You're dogging it, Ding Dong. Wake up. These are cross brew fundamentals. Work it, work it, hit it. Gee whiz, Kyle. When it comes to big refreshment, we could all use a little coaching. Cross Brew Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. Yes! Coach? Ah! Movie? Call, pack, kick back. That's all it takes to move your direct TV. One call before moving, pack your receiver, and we do the rest. Just call, pack, kick back, and ask about three free months of our premium programming. Plus, schedule your move today, and NFL Sunday ticket is included. So make your move easy. Call Direct TV. Hands can do incredible things. Now they can even help save a life with hands-only CPR. If you see an adult suddenly collapse, just call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. Learn more at handsonlycpr.org. Most 40 mile per gallon sedans are sentenced to a life of uninspired performance. Not this one. Meet the 2012 Mazda 3 with revolutionary sky active technology. It's not the first 40 mile per gallon sedan. It's just the first one worth driving. We build Mazdas. What do you drive? ACC College Football Saturday, brought to you by Coors Light, by Ford, by Z-Max, and
I think they need to rename that song Saturdays in the Snow. That's where we are at College Park, Maryland. It's cold and wet and snowy, 21-3. Boston College, Rich Waltz along with Keith Jones, Jen Hildreth down on the sidelines. Snow didn't seem to bother Boston College one bit in the first half, though. You know, we talked about the fact that on Thursday they worked out in the mud and the rain, and I think that really has paid some dividends. They have fumbled the ball away, but they've run the ball very effectively, over 200 yards on the ground here in the first half. Took advantage of a couple of miscues by Maryland, but right now you've obviously both on the scoreboard, momentum, and handling the conditions got to give Boston College the, 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 the thumbs up. Roland and Finch, Alex Amidon and there, Andre Williams all with rushing touchdowns, and Maryland really just hasn't gotten on track offensively. One interception, that's their only turnover, but they have put the ball on the ground numerous times, and they've just not been comfortable. There's that pick by Keekley, but Maryland seems to have really struggled uh, with the conditions. Here are the statistics. You talked about the rushing yardage is big. Turnovers have played a, a point, and the third down conversions big for Boston College as well. Let's go down to the field. Jen Hildreth with Randy Edsel. And coach, what do you take out of this first half for your team? What do you need to do second half? Well, we, we just got to take advantage of opportunities to opportunities that we had and we can't we can't shoot ourselves in the foot kicking the ball out of bounds and you know just not uh, executing as well as we need to. Biggest key to make up this deficit. Well, what we got to do is we just got to sustain drives offensively and we got to hold the line of scrimmage a lot better on defense. Great. Thanks very much. All right, it's, uh, it's not going to be easy to come back in this weather under these conditions with that man, Luke Keekley in the middle, coming after you. And uh, Boston College, who had their moments against Clemson and certainly played well against Virginia Tech, lost both of those games to uh, top 12 BCS teams, have come in here against Maryland and gone up 21-3. And remember, fumbled the ball inside the Maryland 10 or it might have been 28 3 at this point in time and Maryland who won the initial toss deferred they wanted to be on defense and they saw Boston College score with that first possession Maryland will get the first possession here in the second half saw Ronnie Tyler deep Ryan Quigley who also does the punting will kick it off. Justice Pickett is deep as well for the Terps. So we had an entertaining first half, that's for sure. Ball squirted all over the place. Some interceptions, some fumbles, some weird snaps, and some good running by Boston College. And it's Pickett at the four, and Pickett is hammered and dropped. That is Luke Keekley on special teams. Put me in, coach. I don't care that I'm All-American linebacker. I want to be on the kickoff team. You, you just don't see that happen very often, but we have seen so many things <laughs> that Luke Keekley's done that nothing surprises us much anymore. There's your quarterback comparison. C.J. Brown and Danny O'Brien, both through interceptions, both had their issues. O'Brien did not start the game. He came in in relief, and he starts here in the third quarter. Keith, do you have a feel to how Randy Edsel is going to use the quarterbacks from here on out? Is he going to stay with O'Brien? Well, I, I don't know about that, but I do think that they will go back to try to establish that running game so that they can get a little bit of control. Time of possession very much in BC's favor in the first half. Play action. O'Brien deep down the middle, and it's incomplete. A little late on that break for Maryland, Adrian Coxon. Third down and eight. It was raining all morning and getting colder and colder. The snow started just about the time the game started. That's fine with Luke Keekley. He and the Eagles practiced in the rain and the cold and the mud on Thursday. Getting ready for this one. Holloway rushing from the right side, flushes O'Brien up, and there's another drop. Megan has dropped three passes in this ball game. And I, and I didn't make the comment on the long pass, but I don't like those last two calls. You're, you're, you're right out of your own end zone in the shadow of your goalpost. Put the ball on the ground. Try to establish something on the ground. Instead, they go through the air on the last two. They've got a punt. 
and we've seen how difficult it is to catch the football right now, especially for Maryland. Maryland has almost had a couple of punts blocked as well. Ferrara has not had an easy time with the snaps. And he's in trouble, flushed. He'll kick it on the run. It's a line drive, and it may have hit a Boston College player. It's recovered by Maryland. It's a Maryland ball. So what looked like a near disaster for Maryland turns into a big play. Not sure if that was designed to be a rugby-style punt. Ended up that way. But as often the times when those balls are kicked low and they start bouncing around, it is hard to get the attention of the receiving team personnel and have them turn around and find the ball. Here's a look. I think it was Lauren Gorey, a linebacker, that fell on the ball. Good move by Ferrara to get loose. Asperuello was right in there on top of him. And this, this is one that may it. be reviewed and looked at. We'll take a look as well to see if it actually did hit someone. And so a minute into this third quarter, we've got our first review of the game. Didn't appear to hit anybody on a white jersey from that angle. See where the ball comes in. There it is, bouncing. Yep, right hill. off the hill. He sure yeah. did. 89, right off the hill. That's Mike Naples, a backup tight end. That that last view clearly saw the ball hit the heel of Naples right at the 48, and then is pounced on at the 46. This is going to be Maryland's football, and a big break for the Terps, who have been desperate for big breaks in this ball game. They really haven't had many of them. Sometimes you just got to be lucky. Well, you credit Ferrara, though, for making an athletic play, the punter. Yeah, but by the replay, it did not appear it was a design thing. He saw Asperilla on him, pulled it down, and, and sprinted to the outside. We're seeing more and more of those rugby-style kicks uh, become the norm. Well, one thing that allows is it allows time for the coverage team to get down into coverage. And especially if you've got a, a kicker who can hit it end over end, you're going to get the benefit of the roll right there. Off the heel. Great camera work, guys. Right there off of the heel. The ruling on the field stands. The uh, field microphone having some weather issues as well. So let's see if Maryland can take advantage of it. Frank Spaziani telling Jen Hildreth on the way into halftime that his team had to be focused a little more so and take care of the ball, even though they were up 21 to 3. And it's O'Brien right back at it at the Boston College 46 yard line. BC shows blitz, and here they come. Maggot runs right into the teeth of it. Sean Duggan, along with Luke Keekley, there and makes the stop. I don't know what a nose for a football looks like, per se, but you can just take a shot of uh, Keekley's nose and it would suffice. Wherever the ball is, number 40 is going to be very, very close to it. Eight tackles, one interception for Keekley so far. Gain of one, second and nine for Maryland. Megan, right side has a hole, breaks another tackle. David Megan down to the 25. And he shoved out of bounds by DeVito at the 22-yard line. Did a slip and slide break out over there? What was that? That's David Megan, who actually had success in the first half and has a nice run here. This tackle right there, excuse me. And at the very tail end, Hampton Hughes with the miss. Watch the slide. Yee! Nice sound effect. 94 yards now for Megan on 11 carries. And Megan again over the right side. He is short, but very, very strong and powerful. 5'9", 215. And out of Clinton, Maryland. Sierski out front, the fullback for Maryland, doing a good job of providing some personal protection for Megan. Megan 
out of the ball game now. Justice Pickett in the eye behind Sierski with O'Brien at the helm and a ball at the 15 yard line of Boston College scrambling as O'Brien buying time and space and he throws it out of bounds. It's incomplete outside the tackle box and he got it past just past the line of scrimmage smart play by O'Brien not to turn the ball over not to make a mistake Holloway and Edibali both pressuring him. He plays much older than a true sophomore because of that playing time he got last year. And Ten starts last year. A terrific year last year. 22 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Third down short. Pickett hit. And that's a strong runner as he drags a couple of tacklers forward. Looks like he's just short of the first down. It, look, it should be real close. Kasim Edibale made the stop. Obviously, Maryland who missed a field goal in the first half in four down mode right now with this weather on fourth and short DJ Adams is in the ball game he's the deep back that fourth and a yard to go O'Brien to Adams he's hit bounces off the tackle has the first down. ball on the floor Maryland's got it Quinton McCree. So a first down and a good heads up play by the wide receiver McCree. DJ Adams, the initial carry. Interesting substitution here, though, with DJ Adams because he hasn't carried the ball in this ball game. Fourth down situation. He is their short yard specialist. He has 19 carries, but he has scored three touchdowns. Now it's first and goal. Maryland on the move. Boston College with a turnover on special teams giving Maryland great field position and that's Megan see now Under Armour is going to have to design a uniform that uh, sheds mud so you can see the number on the back of Megan either that or the, the numbers light up they're fluorescent somehow Maryland, of course, famous for all the, the different combinations that Under Armour has provided them with. Megan and Pickett in the backfield. Second and goal. O'Brien, lots of time, scrambling for the sideline, and he'll dash out of bounds at the nine, gain of maybe a yard. Kasim Edibale, the sophomore, out of Germany in pursuit. They lined, they lined Megan up in the fullback position. They ran him on a wheel route, but he wasn't open. And that's the reason why O'Brien had to pull it down and get what he could. Third down has not been kind to Maryland in this ballgame. They're just 2 of 10 on third down. O'Brien. Swing pass for Pickett has the catch but has no yards. And that's because Sean Duggan, who's done a nice job filling in for the injured Kevin Pierre Lewis, was there to make the stop. That's the strength of the defense for Boston College. Everybody knows about Luke Keekley, but Pierre Lewis, when healthy, is a good player. Duggan's played well and Steele DeVito on the other side. Duggan from Cincinnati, a true freshman who is playing like he's a junior and been there a while. Well, that's where Keekley's from as well, so that's no coincidence that he's shown up here at Boston College. Ferrara now from 27 yards. He missed badly on a 34 yarder his last time out. Hit early from 33. This one hits the upright, bounces back. Three times Maryland has settled for three, and they have just the one field goal to show for. Attention American mesothelioma victims. American asbestos workers gave their lives for their jobs. Why were these strong patriots from the greatest generation allowed to work around toxic, deadly asbestos? How could we let this happen? Listen to me. I'm attorney Greg Jones, the tough, smart asbestos lawyer. Employers and asbestos manufacturers have known since the 1930s that asbestos is dangerous. But for some American workers, their job was a death sentence. These huge companies put their huge profits above American lives. And that's just not right. If you have mesothelioma, 
Call the tough, smart asbestos lawyer to fight for your family's future. Don't be a victim twice. Call me for a free evaluation. I help victims of mesothelioma. Let me help you and your family. If you don't get a settlement, you don't owe me anything. Call Greg Jones, the go-to lawyer for mesothelioma victims. The call is free. Call now. Call 1-800-544-2450. That's 1-800-544-2450. Call now. Attention mothers and fathers of children with birth defects. The antidepressant drug Zoloft has been linked to heart, brain, and spine damage and many other horrible birth defects in newborns. Birth defects are a mother's worst nightmare. It's a terrible thing for a family to bear. If you are a mother or father and your child has a birth defect, the drug Zoloft may be to blame. I'm attorney Bob Goldwater. If this has happened to you or a loved one, call us right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Call the Goldwater Law Firm right now for a free legal consultation. You and your child may be entitled to financial compensation. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so call us right now. There's absolutely no risk on your part. You don't owe us anything unless we're successful. If you took Zoloft while you were pregnant and your child was born with a birth defect, call the Goldwater Law Firm right now. Call the Goldwater Law Firm right now. Call 1-800-975-9600. That's 1-800-975-9600. Master.com. Andre Aldridge with the Coors Light game break. Wake Forest in North Carolina. Second quarter, Wake down seven. Going for the old flea flicker, but ah, it doesn't work out well for them. North Carolina leads 21-10 at the half. Let's get you back to College Park right now. Okay. Thank you, Andre. 21-3 here, third quarter, 10 minutes left. This was the Ferrara field goal attempt. He hit it cleanly, Keith. He just kept just it pulled up. And remember, this is not baseball. That's not a foul pole. <laughs> that was a, a better kick, though, than the last one he missed, which was a, a hook job. 152 yards on the ground for this man in the ball game. Rolandon Finch. And he has a nice pickup of 15 yards. Finch had a big first half, but remember he fumbled on consecutive carries near the end of the first half, and he got himself yanked from the ball game. And again, just right up the gut, as it were, in between the tackles. He does bounce it out once he gets to the second level, does Finch. 167 yards on 25 carries. Remember earlier we showed you the highlights of Montel Harris Going for what was it 141 yards back uh, two years ago on this field. Boston College beat Maryland. Well, Finch right now has another big hole. This offensive line is absolutely dominating. Dexter McDougal made the stop. And Finch is doing a great job once receiving the ball to make the first guy miss. Maryland's got a guy on the outside, the left side. And he just runs right by him, does Finch and then just keeps driving and driving and driving. Now, I know schools will, I guess, promote or suggest offensive linemen candidate of the week, you know, offensive linemen of the week candidates. They submit them into the conference office, yes. Right. I, I think they should just... The line. The entire offensive line for Boston College. That should be the nomination this week. Finch, right side, swallowed up by Maurice Hampton at the 49-yard line. And Finch obviously trying to hang on to the football in these spots. But Boston College has impressively moved the football back out to midfield right now. Eating up clock. Frank Spaziani looking for his first ACC win this year, second win overall. There was the, uh, the close loss to Northwestern. The heartbreaking loss to Duke on a, a missed field goal in the closing seconds. 182 yards, a career high for Rolandon Finch. Finch again up the middle. And he's caught and dropped from behind. Gain of seven. Darren Drakeford made the stop. A situation here, Rich, where it's not so much about scheme. It's not about play calling. Right now, it just boils down to who wants it more. This is football in its simplest form. 
And you get a sense that even if the field were pristine and it was 70 degrees right now, that Boston College would have the same game plan as they do right now. That, that's who they are right now. And they are a run between the tackles, run right at you offensive football team. Four of eight on third down are the Eagles. This is third and short. This is Finch. And he's close. Boy, he's planted right inside the 45 by Joe Villano. I think they're going to mark him just a little bit short. Now you've got to make a decision with your coach, Spaziani. His offensive linemen are all saying, let's go for it. Good initial surge, but he get, kind of gets caught up in the backwash. And then Villano, number 72, just kind of squiggles his way through there, which is hard to do when you're 300 pounds, I understand. And it looks like Boston College is going to bring the punt team on. That's one of those where when Finch watches that on film, he's going to say, if I kept my head down and kept my feet churning, he'd have picked up the first down. Quickly, that is four. It's easy to say from up here, though. Quickly with 14 of his 38 punts being down inside the 20. This is a... Uh, High spiral that's not going to be inside the 20. The question is, is it even inside the 30? A little triangulation going on there. They're going to mark it right at the 28 yard line, 21 3, Boston College. Boston Bruins individual game tickets for the 2011-2012 season are on sale. Catch your 2011 Stanley Cup champions in action as they return to the TD Garden to defend their title in marquee matchups against the Canadians, Flyers, Lightning, Canucks, and more. It's the Boston Bruins 2011-2012 season presented by the Massachusetts State Lottery. For tickets, call 617-624-2327 or visit bostonbruins.com. Nesson wanted a serious fishing show where men fish and talk about men's stuff. You can talk fashion like you're using it. With a tough, rugged host. I'm like Fabio at the fishing pole. Of strong mind. I think my dad's crazy. And strong values. I'd rather look good than to actually catch fish. <laughs> this is not that show. It's Charlie Moore Outdoors, the greatest show on H2O. Sunday nights on Nesson. Brought to you by Obishon, Eastern Propane and Oil, and Subaru of New England. The financial landscape keeps changing. It's tough to navigate, full of too many followers and not enough leaders. At BB&T, we help our mortgage clients know which way to steer. By sharing more than 135 years of financial knowledge, you and your family have the information you need to move in a brighter direction. Talk to us today about your mortgage needs and know how it feels to know more. BB&T, official bank of the ACC. Like so many great pioneers before me, guided only by a dream, I'm embarking on a journey of epic proportion. I will travel from sea to shining sea through amber waves of grain, and I won't stop until I've helped every driver in America save hundreds on car insurance. Well, I'm out of the parking lot. That's a good start. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car this is Nessie, home of the Boston Bruins. What's out? ACC College Football Saturday, brought to you by BB&T, by Toyota, and by AT&T. David Meggett with the carry, and it's actually it's Danny O'Brien who pulled it and kept it. And he's across midfield all the way down to the 41 yard line. And that's that running ability that, that really hasn't been on show here for a year and a half. Bill McGovern, the defensive coordinator, said that's a ride and decide play by the quarterback. And there is Meggett. The quarterback rides the tailback and decides whether he wants to give it to him or keep it. That time he gave it to Meggett. And Boston College defended it well. It's second down and nine. The snow has stopped. It snowed throughout the first half. Temperatures are still in the uh, high 30s, low 40s. Wind chill down into the 20s here at College Park, Maryland. Boston College on the road built a 21-3 first half lead. They've held it here midway through the third. Danny O'Brien at the helm. 
Little screen pass out to McCree, and he bounced it. It's incomplete. C.J. Brown started at quarterback, and Brown did not have a, a good start. He was just two of six. O'Brien hasn't been much better. It's not been a good day receiving-wise for Maryland. They've dropped some passes as well. Two of 17, 24 yards. He's probably had four to five drops. Shotgun, O'Brien rolling, looking. Hit as he thrown, and a nice play coming over the middle. There's Keekley, who's had another terrific day. If he's not an All-American, I'm not sure they should keep the award going. I mean, he's just had an incredible year, and it's not a fluke. He led the nation in tackles last year. He was second in the nation in tackles as a freshman. So it's not like he's surprising anybody. He just is very, very consistent. Nine tackles, one interception, one tackle for a loss. It's a fourth down here, and Maryland's going to go for it. At the 41-yard line of Boston College, O'Brien back. His throw is incomplete. And O'Brien not real happy, signaling to his receiver. I think he's upset. I think he was supposed to shorten that route or stop that route. Adrian Coxon was the intended receiver. And there's O'Brien, 21-3. Boston College holds and still leads it. The following game preview is rated B. Tonight, Bruins, Canadians, part two in an old-time hockey original six rivalry. They're beating them, and they're beating them up. This time, the Bruins travel to Montreal into enemy territory, and the offense looks to shake off their early season struggles and reclaim their place among the NHL elite. He scores! Sticks the dagger through the hook! Tonight, Bruins, Canadians. Coverage begins at 6.30 on Nesson. Nesson wanted a serious fishing show. Men fish and talk about men's stuff. You can talk fashion like you're using it. With a tough, rugged host. I'm like Fabio at the fishing pole. Of strong mind. I think my dad's crazy. And strong values. I'd rather look good than to actually catch fish. <laughs> this is not that show. It's Charlie Moore Outdoors, the greatest show on H2O. Sunday nights on Ness. Brought to you by Ovishon, Eastern Propane and Oil, and Subaru of New England. Sure, I Dish Network claims to be a better value than DirecTV. What Dish doesn't tell you is that if you're one of the millions who love AMC, BET, Bravo, or MSNBC, you won't get them with Dish Network's Top 120 package. In fact, you won't get any of these 48 channels. With DirecTV's Choice Package, you get all those channels plus every other top-rated channel, too. More of the channels you love. Another reason 50 million people agree. Don't just watch TV, DirecTV. Six stairs takes determination. So will getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. In Michigan, visit knowhowtogomichigan.org. Wendy's game summary. It's 21-3 Boston College, but it's been a messy ball game as you would expect. Wind chills in the 20s, snow throughout the first half. A couple missed field goals for Maryland. Just 65 yards passing, got five fumbles. Have three interceptions in this ball game. And Boston College with good field position. Andre Williams in the backfield. This is Amadon around the right side. They'd like to get him in motion and then give him the football. He scored on a play like that in the first half. And he has a nice pickup there. Titus Till and Dexter McDougal double teamed him for the tackle for Maryland. Chase Reddick. Threw an interception, but that was on a uh, Hail Mary throw at the end of the first half. He's 4 of 10 in this ball game for just 27 yards. But, of course, his team has run for 250 yards. So he hasn't needed to throw for a lot. Naples in motion. Williams the carry. Look at the hole. No one touched him for the first nine yards of that carry. Going over the left side behind John Wetzel, Bobby Bardaro. 
Man, this offensive line has played well. Very much so. We're going to ISO on Williams and watch. There's not going to be any Maryland players come until, as you call, eight, nine, ten yards down the field. John Wetzel, the left uh, tackle, had his man sealed, and that's what opened up the big hole. Second and short. Uh -oh. On the floor, and it's picked up, and Redding, I think, has got a first down. And Reddy did indeed pick up a first down. Joe Villano made the stop. One of the things you tell your offensive skills folks, particularly here in the second half, ball security becomes that much more important because you don't want to give a cheap touchdown on a fumble return or even an interception return that gets Maryland some momentum. Jay Sinkovec is in the ball game, and he's in motion, the fullback spot. Williams left side. This time, he has company, and Darren Drakeford is there to make the hit. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage. The offensive line for Boston College has had quite a day. Well, they, they haven't done anything terribly fancy. They have pulled around on some traps and things like that, but most importantly, they've been physical. A lot of these runs starting between the tackles, between the hashes, ball carriers breaking them outside at the tail end, but they start right up the middle. Emmett Cleary, the right tackle, helping up Ian White. 261 yards on the ground for Boston College. Williams bounces this one outside, and Maryland strings it out well. The running play prior, Rich Williams was too impatient. He didn't he didn't stutter step and let the offensive lineman get ahead of him. That time, a better job of just letting the play develop and not trying to make or force something to happen. A better game, but not an easy down in these conditions. Third down and seven. BC's four of nine on third down. You can see Maryland struggles at two of twelve. Dante Elliott has checked into the ball game along with Spiffy Evans at the wide receiver spot on a draw and that one's not going to get it done Andre Williams and this brings up an interesting decision it's going to be fourth down and about five it's a 47 yard field goal but that may be a pipe dream in these conditions well and not only that if you punt the ball and the ball goes into the end zone you're going to net about nine yards. So it looks like Boston College is actually going to go for this. Ball to 29 yard line. Randy Edsel of Maryland. Frank Spaziani across the way. Two coaches in very similar spots right now with the young teams racked by injuries just looking for something good to happen. On fourth and four. Reddick swings it out. That's a nice play. Finch dances. And it looks like he got the first down. <laughs> the Boston College coach is running up to help the official with the spot. And credit Finch. He had to get some momentum to get to the edge, but then stay on the edge to keep the first down. A ballet class broke out in the middle of a football game. Wow. Oh, he's short right there. Yeah, but where's the ball while he's there? If the ball's forward of you his foot. You are correct. You are correct. He's got the first down. But a lot of times they'll mark it on that foot. Good, bad, or indifferent. 17th first down by Boston College. This time it's Finch. Now we got a flag. We haven't had many penalty flags in this. Just one penalty in the first half that I recall. But this one is sitting at the 24 yard line. Ten yards from the previous block. That's Ian White, the sophomore. Here's a look at that uh, Finch run. I've just seen it so many times where they've marked the ball where his foot is. Now they got a good spot. Buck 20 left, third quarter. Landon Finch has run for a career high 187 yards. And that, just the second penalty flag of the ballgame. 
Reddick give to Finch, bust it over the middle, breaks a couple tackles, and with hard work gets himself back inside the 24. Eric Franklin made the stop. That's an 11-yard pickup. Yeah, now Rolandon Finch is closing in on 200 yards. 199 for Finch on 30 carries. And you can see the clock rolling down. Play clock is at 14, so Boston College is going to run a play, at least a play here before the third quarter expires. Play action, Redding rolling, waiting for help for a tight end to clear, and he threw it behind Chris Pantelli. Pantelli got caught up in the backwash at the second level, and Reddick was waiting for him to come open. And a dangerous pass because that ball can get tipped or hit up into the air and intercepted very easily. Long third down coming up for BC here at the Maryland 23. It's been a fun ball game. Rich Waltz along with Keith Jones, Jen Hildreth down on the sideline. Thankfully for Jen, it's not snowing anymore which it did the entire first half. Have not seen Boston College use a screen. Last time they used a draw. Got Williams in the backfield. It is a draw on third down. He's got big yardage, but not enough. To the 19. And this is a very similar fourth down that they picked up on the run by Finch. And they're going to have time because the uh, quarter will expire and they can decide what they want to do. In fact, the other end of the field might be a little drier. 21 3 after 3, Boston College on top of Maryland. the perfect hotel from Priceline. Trust your car to Allied Star. Do you own a car, truck, or SUV with less than 150,000 miles? Has your factory warranty expired? Now you can get an extended vehicle protection plan from Allied Star. This vehicle protection plan is customized just for you. If you own a car, truck, or SUV, eventually your car will break down. Repair bills could cost thousands of dollars. Did you know that a new engine could cost over $3,600? A new transmission will cost over $2,000. Insurance covers accidents, but what if your car breaks down? You need an extended vehicle vehicle protection plan from Allied Star. You won't have to pay for repair bills up front and then wait to be reimbursed. If your car is over three years old, it's easy to qualify. You choose the licensed repair shop and we pay the bill. It's that simple. Call now and get our 24-hour roadside assistance added for free when you activate your extended vehicle protection plan. Trust your car to Allied Star. Call us today to get a free quote in just five minutes. You could save thousands. 800-965-5173. That's 800-965-5173. Have you ever had a job that, when you finished, people said thank you and told you what a great job you did? That's what happens when you're a massage therapist. A few years ago, I went to visit a friend who was working at a spa. It was so cool. He liked where he was working, and it looked like fun. I never really thought about making it a career until I saw a commercial on TV for massage therapy career training. Then I thought, maybe I could do that too. So I called and got started right away. If you're interested in getting started in a career that you'll really enjoy, then call the number on your screen right now. Our massage therapy training program is a real hands-on experience. You'll train in a relaxed setting with instructors who make learning fun. And our hands-on training will prepare you for a variety of career paths, even owning your own business. Today, I work at a great spa. I have fun and make people feel better every day. That's why I love this job. I'm so glad I picked up the phone and made that call. Make the call that will finally change your life. There's no obligation. Call right now. 
tonight following Bruins coverage. First Tito, now Theo. What's next for the Sox? Ben Cherrington set to move into the GM office abandoned by Theo Epstein. This is what I love to do. This is the job that I want. Plus, with October coming to a close, what will it take for the Bruins to shake their early season struggles? Right now we're just trying to find our A game. And the Pats get ready to head to Pittsburgh on Sunday. We'll see how they'll size up against the Steelers. He's big and he can move. He's going to be a challenge for us. Nesson Daily presented by Sun Life Financial. Tonight, following Bruins coverage. That's our Sprint Unlimited update, little recap here on the ground. That's how Boston College did it in the first half. Landon Finch, Alex Amidon, and then Andre Williams. 21 points in the first half, and that has stood up. Here now as we start the fourth quarter, Boston College still has the lead, but they've got a fourth down deep in Maryland territory at the 19-yard line of the Terps. And you can see fourth down and four and they're going to attempt the field goal. Nate Freeze is on. He is nine of 12. This coming from 36 yards. Hold it. And we've seen three missed field goals. And that's the first one that Freeze has attempted. So a nice drive of 10 plays and 40 yards but no points for Boston College. As New England sports fans like Michelle and I, we witness the impossible become possible every day. The same is true here at Perkins School for the Blind. Four and a half million children worldwide do not attend school simply because they're blind. Perkins, along with partners in 65 countries, aims to change that. Perkins is proud to partner with Nesson to ensure that all children have access to education. Perkins School for the Blind in Nesson. All we see is possibility. To find out more, visit Nesson.com slash connects. BostonGlobe.com. Everything you love about the Boston Globe, everywhere you are, on every device. Free for Globe subscribers and free for everyone this September. Experience BostonGlobe.com today. Liverpool, the world's most historic soccer club, heads to the Hawthorns to face former manager Roy Hodgson, whose leadership is now transforming West Brom into a top-tier force. Tomorrow at 8, Liverpool-West Brom, the English Premier League Match of the Week on Nesson, presented by Ace Ticket. If you love your car and want to protect it, then you need Haviland Motor Oil. Chevron Haviland contains the Deposit Shield formulation. This protects your fuel economy and helps minimize carbon emissions, which of course helps to protect the environment. So look for the shield and protect what matters. Haviland talk out there about who makes the most dependable truck. Well, talk is cheap. Here's a fact for you. The Toyota Tundra received J.D. Power & Associates' most dependable large pickup six years in a row. Now, that's a statement no other truck can make. Save up to $67.50 on the 2011 Toyota Tundra double cab with 0% APR. The full-size Tundra from Toyota. with this game break. Wake Forest and North Carolina going at it. And the outstanding freshman Giovanni Bernard with his second touchdown of the day. Put the Tar Heels up 21 to 10 in the third quarter right now. And it is the same number. Our thumbing in results. The best pro to come out of either Maryland or B.C. And you believe it is class of 85, Doug Flutie of B.C. Hey, let's get you back to College Park. Here's Rich Walsh. O'Brien's throw down the left sideline is broken up. Quinton McCree was the intended receiver. Al Lewis G was the defender. Danny O'Brien still in at quarterback for the Maryland Terrapins. He took over for C.J. Brown midway through the first half. Nothing fancy. The old flyer out. Ball's underthrown severely. It's been a miserable day weather-wise and for the quarterbacks on both sides of the ball. Both the uh, O'Brien and Brown have struggled, and Chase Reddick has not had the best of days either. Boston College, first charge timeout. O'Brien is now 5 of 20 for 24 yards and an interception. And Brown was just 2 of 6 for 14 yards. He had an interception. 
Jen Hildreth is down on the sideline. And it's been an interesting year, Jen, for both uh, C.J. Brown and Danny O'Brien. It has, and as you can imagine, Rich, it could be a difficult situation. Those two, I talked to them both this week, so they're both really good friends. They are rooting for one another. And, you know, I asked Danny, I said, you know, how have you kind of handled all of this? And he said, I know it's been tough at times, but I still have complete confidence in myself. I feel like the guys have 100% confidence in me when I go out there. And, you know, I talked to Danny's high school coach this week, and he told me the one thing that stands out to him most about O'Brien is his determination. So he's going to need to call on some of those intangibles to get his team out of the hole in this game, Rich. Jen and Keith, I think one of the variables that is different from last year when he threw 22 touchdowns, he does not have the same supporting cast. He didn't have the talent on the outside. Torrey Smith is gone. Adrian Cannon is gone. Last year he could just get the ball out on a bubble screen or get it deep and guys would make plays. He has not had the the best of protection as well. Plus, yeah. this is a different system. It is. And he, he was very close to uh, James Franklin, who was the uh, offensive coordinator here, now the head coach at Vanderbilt. And it's just different. Doesn't mean it's good, bad. It's just different. O'Brien, little dump pass. There have been a lot of balls like that, too. Just short little balls that are are gimmies on a normal day that today have been dropped. Just about all of them have been dropped by Merrill. It's not been for inaccurate throws. They have been behind sometimes, but they've been balls that uh, should have been caught, could have been caught. This is a day where if you're an offensive coordinator, Gary Croton for Maryland, Dave Brock for Boston College, it, it, it's hard to get real creative on this type of playing surface in these type of conditions. Ferrara gets a clean snap and gets the kick away. Fair catch called for and made at the 39 by Bobby Swigert, 21-3 Boston College. You never know when, but thieves can steal your identity. You know, I can save you 15% today if you open up a charge card account with us. You just read my mind. Just one piece of information, and they can steal your credit and ruin your reputation. You need LifeLock, relentlessly protecting your personal information to help stop the crooks before your identity is stolen. Credit monitoring only tells you after you've been attacked, but LifeLock's advanced ID alert system directly notifies you, protecting your identity before you become a victim. No one can stop all identity theft. That's why you need the security of our $1 million service guarantee. Call now to try LifeLock risk-free for a full six days. If you're not completely satisfied, you won't pay a cent. Act now and get this document shredder at $29 value free. Call 1-800-364-0611 to try LifeLock risk-free for a full 60 days. Use promo code no risk plus get your free document shredder. Call 1-800-364-0611 now. LifeLock service guarantee cannot be offered to residents of New York. My electric bill was breaking the bank. So to save some money, I trained this team of guinea pigs to row this tiny boat. They generate electricity, which lets me surf the web all day. Took me six months to train each one. Eight months to get the little chubby one to yell, row. It's kind of strange. Such a simple word. Row. There's an easier way to save. Get online. Go to geico.com. Get a quote. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Wow, what's that? Oh, it's the new AT&T smartphone. <sighs> nice. I wish I could afford one. Yeah, I got a good deal. So. Look at that screen. Ooh. Fast, too, right? Oh, yeah. Last week, FITD. It streams movies. Real web browsing. Turn left now. <laughs> Look at this camera. Hold on. Let's get a photo. I'm listening to downloaded music. Oh, I can afford that. See ya. The AT&T Impulse 4G. For $29.99, there's no excuse not to get your own. AT&T. ACC College Football Saturday in College Park, Maryland. Night falling, temperatures dropping. 21-3 Boston College on top. The fans that have remained here have endured sideways rain, some sleep, and then snow throughout the first half. Winds upwards of 20 miles an hour. And they've seen Roland and Finch tote the rock a lot, and Finch goes over 200 yards with that carry. 31 carries, 202 yards now, a career high for the sophomore. Roland and Finch, 266 yards rushing coming into the ballgame. Long 
Dale Harris, the last to go above 200. And they hope to have Montel Harris healthy and back next year. Pinch at 202. Out of St. Xavier High School in Kentucky. Grew up in New Albany, Indiana. Did a nice job of reading that massive offensive line. And they essentially plow him with the football across the 50 and uh, deliver him to the 49 yard line. I know that $2,000 stipend hasn't kicked in yet. But had it uh, kicked in this week, Finch might be taking those guys out to dinner tomorrow night. First and 10, Boston College running some clock, moving the sticks, and looking for win number one in the ACC. And a little bit of momentum. They've had everything happen bad to them. They've lost close ball games. They've had injuries. They've had stars go out. A little something to get a spark to this 2011 season. Well, Frank Spaziani told us this week he was very happy with the effort at Virginia Tech in the game in which they led at half seven to six. Had a great drive going in the third quarter before they turned it over. Yeah, they were down 13-7. Reddick was hit on a throw and threw an interception inside the 10. And at times against Clemson, they played well. So, you know, if you could pick quarters out of those ball games and put them all together, you could have a, a real nice game. In this one, they came out and hit Maryland right in the teeth. And uh, the Terps haven't been the same since. 21-3 quickly, and it's been 21-3 since BC scored. On the 21-yard uh, run, back in the first half in the second quarter, four of 11 now on third down. As Boston College, they're going to have another one here for the football at the Maryland 44-yard line. Been in a lot of time in the huddle. Not, I'm not sure just to run down the play clock or the game clock. I think there is some confusion. They may burn the time out here. So BC calls the timeout and they'll talk over this. They're down in five. I think the crowd is booing number one because Maryland's down, but number two because they're cold and they, <laughs> they wanted to see that third down play. Busy day in the ACC already. We told you about Virginia Tech's win over Duke. Later on tonight, Clemson and Georgia Tech. And of course, Clemson's got that combo of Taj Boyd, Sammy Watkins. Defensively, they can do it as well. And the Clemson Tigers right now, the top team in the ACC in terms of the BCS rankings, an all-time high of five. Right now, the Jamison Inn scoreboard around the league. Florida State's hot, their third straight win. There's that scare on the road for Virginia Tech. They just get by Duke. How about the Tar Heels? Well, Wake Forest is coming back. Wake Forest was down big early in that game, and of course, Clemson and Georgia Tech later on tonight. Here, Maryland and Boston College, it's been BC, and it's been BC on the ground. 298 yards on the ground. Finch, wow. Hole, busts through. He's just caught at the 30. Spills forward to the 28. Titus Till made the stop. And another gaping hole by that Boston College offensive line. Watch this line. They pull a couple of different people. <laughs> and then look at this lane. Wow, that was Bobby Vadaro, the right guard, who simply hammered someone as he came down the line of scrimmage. That's a clinic. But that one, that's almost a, a deep cleater, and that's uh, using the screwing cleats <laughs> for the mud. Bump that one for the training. Finch, that's another nine yards for Finch, who's well across the 200-yard barrier, career day. For Landon Finch.
just keeps moving and moving and moving. Called Deuce because he's uh, is named after his father. And the mom didn't want to have anything else to call, so he just called him Deuce. 239 yards on 36 carries. And here's Joe. Joe Bolano. No defensive lineman in the country has made more tackles per game than Bolano. He's around, gets on the hip, and then cuts off the ball carry. A lot of the same characteristics that Luke Keekley has in terms of instinct, temperament, relentlessness are all shared by Volano. His dad was an All-American here at Maryland. Got Terrapin running through those blood veins. Third down and two. Williams, he's hit. And he's short of the first down. Volano, along with Lauren Gordon. Working in there, keeping leverage, staying down, and then finding the ball carrier and grabbing a piece. Now, Boston College from this similar spot just missed a field goal. It looks like they're going to try another one. This will be a 36 yarder. Nate Freeze missed his last one. They're going to spot it right the 27, so part of 37 yarder. And I'm not sure why everyone keeps trying field goals because it's been a miserable day for the kickers. That's four misses. Four bad misses. Honey, this is the one. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa is right. It's got larger capacity for more storage. Wow. Check out this great brush silver exterior. Shiny. Can't you just feel the cold? I can't. You really want to experience cold? Oh, yeah. Crack this baby open. I will. The Coors Light Silver Bullet Aluminum Pints. The mountains let you see it's cold. The bottle lets you feel the cold. The wide mouth lets you taste the cold. Joe? Joseph. What? Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. BostonGlobe.com. Finally, a digital newspaper that reads just like a newspaper. Made for your computer, tablet, and phone. And made to be read. BostonGlobe.com. Stories you take with you. Stories that stay with you. Are you overwhelmed with too much credit card debt? When looking for debt relief options, it can be confusing, especially with all the claims debt relief companies are making out there. So if you find yourself struggling with 10,000 or more in credit card debt and you just want the facts about legitimate debt relief programs, then call American Credit Card Solutions for a free debt relief kit that will tell you about your options in easy to understand terminology. But kits are limited, so call right now. Has a lot to prove. CC College Football Saturday, brought to you by Coors Light, by Buick, and by Honda Generator. Under Armour, of course, is outfitted Maryland in countless uniform combinations. And uh, the combination today is black and red and mud. On a wet and cold day here at College Park, Danny O'Brien going deep down the right side, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Quentin McCree. Snowed throughout the first half. This is natural surface, and it's a, it's not a surface that drains quite well. We've been told that in all probability there will be a new surface, whether it's new grass with better drainage or field turf next year. Expect a new look here at the Capital One Field here at Maryland. 
O'Brien is going to run and then dive down at the 23 yard line. Dominic Apia was in pursuit. Approaching eight minutes left in this ball game with Boston College on top, 21-3. Under Armour, of course, also outfitting our Jen Heldrick, thankfully, with uh, a lot of cold weather gear. Nice pump fake. O'Brien to the sidelines, throws back across, and a catch. Keekley makes the stop, but not before Andrew Cox, Adrian Coxon makes the catch. Nice play by O'Brien. Very much so. We've seen him roll that way and try to throw the ball back. That time he was on target, however. Yeah. And Megat swallowed up by a Pia. And wholesale changes on the Boston College defensive side with a lot of substitutes. Yeah, and I know how you know that because there's a lot of clean uniforms. I can tell what number they are. There are a lot of clean uniforms that just appeared on the Boston College side. O'Brien back, has time, little dump down route. Just enough for the first down. Kenny Boykins, the carry. It's going to move the sticks. Jim Noel, who is questionable in this game, is down on the sideline. Noel, the junior out of Everett, Massachusetts, it was a game time decision, and the decision was good enough to play. And right now, with 7.25 left, he sits and waits. See the Maryland side, they've got the heated benches. Along with the uh, kind of the blowtorch heaters that are on both sidelines. Mental note: We need blowtorch heaters up here. Well, that's it's all a matter of planning. And Maryland had talked about getting ready for this weekend, and you you're not required to provide the same amenities for the opposing team, but you can help. Boston College called Maryland said hey can you direct us to some place that has those for rental and so they rented some of the heaters on the Boston College sideline as well but they just have the regular steel benches there they are the regular aluminum benches over there on the Boston College side while the uh, heated benches with little foot warmers are over on the Maryland side. First and ten. Megan is sandwiched. And to the 45 yard line. So you've got the little spots where you can put your feet in there. If I could only put my feet in there. 99 yards now for Megan on 17 carries. Couldn't handle it, and it's incomplete. He ends up in a pile of mud. And you can see how it would be a tough day to catch the football. His arms and hands and, and uniform caked with mud. This one just popped right out. That may look like fun, but I can assure you it's not. Third down 11. Nine of 32. Two interceptions, 62 yards total for both quarterbacks. O'Brien, a near miss in the backfield, and a man open down the sidelines. It's caught there. It's Coxon. He's in. Touchdown. No flags. Adrian Coxon. Pressure from BC. O'Brien's right. At the last minute, he steps aside. That was Asprilla on a corner blitz. Keeps those eyes downfield. And Maryland finally with a touchdown. Freshman out of Baltimore with a touchdown catch. Extra point is good. And so Maryland making this a little interesting here. A scramble by O'Brien. 
21-10 game now. the official training bike of the Tour de France, the Proform TD app. The first ever indoor training bike that delivers the thrill and challenge of the real tour. A 20% incline and a 20% decline. You experience exactly what the road does. Powered by Google Maps, you choose any road in the world and the TDF follows it. TDF is the training advantage you've been waiting for. Push the tempo through the Pyrenees, break away from the peloton, and attack Mont Ventoux. You decide, and the official training bike of the Tour takes you there. The only cyclists training like this are already on the Tour. So we went to the Tour de France to show off the TDF advantage. The training bike to map your ride is almost perfect. You can complete the stage before you've actually arrived. With Google Maps, you experience classic climbs like Alp d'Huez. I'd use Google Maps every time. Real road, real resistance, and shifting. Would have been great to have a bike like this to train and practice beforehand. You'll spend the off-season riding your own Tour de France. And when the season starts, your competition won't know what hit them. Plus, with a built-in power meter, you'll always know your exact output. It's been about three and a half thousand US dollars on my power meter. So training with power for me is uh, a huge benefit. No matter where, no matter the season, no matter what the weather. Well, one of the hardest things about living where I live is indeed the weather. Attack the world's famous climbs indoors. The grand depart has begun. Break away from the pack and call or go online to get zero down and a free upgrade to rush shipping on the new Proform TDF. Your tour starts now. Our ACC production truck <laughs> on a Halloween uh, weekend. Hello. <laughs> Everybody working hard. See, those are the folks that stay warm, though. They've got the, the heated production truck, all the amenities in there. Which, which ones had the mask on and which one didn't? I, I couldn't tell. And, of course, now we're not out on the field where it's really cold but I mean we it's open air we got wind in our face but yeah. no, no wet stuff but, up here but you have gloves look no gloves hey onside kick formation right now for Maryland and they try it it's loose and then smothered quickly Nice job, Chris Pantelli, one of the tight ends. Smothered it quickly. There's a flag on the play, or at least, yeah, there is, right at the 40-yard line. If it's against Maryland, Boston College probably will decline and just take the football right there. Personal foul, number 29. 15 yards. First down. Well, a personal foul is going to put 15 yards, and all of a sudden, Frank Spaziani and Boston College are going to be inside the Maryland 30 yard line. Now, remember, Boston College has missed and missed badly on two field goal attempts here in the second half. Is that the personal foul, the late hit? Uh, frankly, I didn't, I didn't see where anything there would have elicited the flag. 26 yard line and Boston College with the football. So the Eagles have missed a couple of field goals and that's kept Maryland now within 11 points after scoring that touchdown. Finch right side and there's nothing going there. Z Max performance recap on this cold and wet Saturday here in Maryland. Finch has a career day of 238 yards, and David Mega is just a yard shy of 100. And had Maryland not been down 21 3 most of the way, Mega probably would have had more carries and obviously more yards. And in a game that the, the weather conditions dictated a lot, particularly in the first half. 
you knew the running game was going to be prominent. Snow flurries are starting again. Amidon, left side, has room, and another big pickup. And he's horse horsepower. Out of, out of bounds, and that'll draw a couple of flags. Watch the wall that gets created by the offensive line and the fullback in just green space. Right there's the horse collar. Cameron Chisholm, I think, guilty of the uh, penalty. Uh, or it took our camera guy out as well. So Boston College is going to have first and goal. They mark it inside the four close to the three right on the three yard line first and goal for the three and with this offensive line the way they've produced and pushed Maryland all over the field for 325 rushing yards you would think this would be pretty simple for BC we'll see Finch left side falls in touchdown and fittingly he wasn't touched the first three yards. He only got hit right at the goal line. Another great push by the offensive front of Boston College. You know the only guys enjoying this, right? The Boston College offensive lineman. Everyone else right this second is miserable. Well, I don't know. I think Rolandon Finch is having a good time. I mean, he's, he's at 243 yards now. And he's got two touchdowns. And now Boston College is comfortably back on top. 28-10. Right up there and right in. Finch having such a good day that he's the subject of our Coors Light freeze cam as well. 28-10 Boston College on top. There's a look at Finch. Of course, he's getting a chance to play because Montel Harris out. And you can tell this is, you can tell this was early in the ball game because you can tell what number he's wearing. Look at the move right there. Now that's a great pose. Yeah, 243 yards later, 38 carries later, Finch is having quite a day. Two touchdowns, 529 left. I don't mean to overstress the point, but right now Quigley's going, do I really have to kick this rock? You could break a toe. I think if you play for Boston College, I think weather like this is something you, you get used to. Justice Pickett. Uh, to the 33-yard line. Jen Hildreth. Yes, that's right. I'm still down here, just in case you're wondering. You guys, I don't want to hear you talking about cold. Anyway, what I do want to talk about a guy that's names become synonymous with Boston College, Mark Herslick, former Defensive Player of the Year, and then, of course, did so much to inspire people with his battle against cancer. And now with the New York Giants, came back, paid a visit to the team last week, and the message to the team was basically take ownership no matter what it is no matter how small it may seem one tackle get out there and take ownership of it and uh, finally some some good things go in the way of the Eagles in this game David Maggot the catch and Maggot gets out to the 38 yard line and Jen you know that's the one thing that the theme that we heard from both coaches this week is keep the message consistent on both sides for Frank Spaziani and for Randy Edsel. Yeah, and you know what, Rich, I think was really interesting. You know, Herzlick talked about, hey, I'd like to be out there starting at linebacker for the Giants, but right now I'm on kick coverage. So I get down and I try to put my name on that tackle. And you know what? Did you see Keekley out there on the coverage team? Trying yep. to put his name on the tackle, yep. and his name is everywhere. I think that speaks volumes to the type of mentality exactly what Herzlick was talking about. Well, Boston College. Randy Edsel trying to do the same. We've, we've documented really on both sides of the ball the, the number of senior players and, and leaders that both teams have lost. Well, and don't forget Edsel as a first year coach, he had 12 players with eligibility remaining that should, chose to leave the program. Quentin McCree and 
McCree on the throw from O'Brien is out to the 45 yard line. First down for Maryland. They'll move the chains. Clock stops 437 left. 14 then, yards on that catch. Rich, this is all about character right here. What Epps is looking for is who's going to continue to play for this Maryland program. Good throw by O'Brien. Furstenberg, the tight end. We haven't called his number much in this one. Nat, the junior, making the catch. Clock runs, not enough for the first down. Second down and three. Maryland down 28-10 in the cold. Some snow, wet, muddy track. And all of a sudden, whatever adjustments they've made, Maryland is moving the ball as well as they have the entire game. Kenny Boykins, the catch. Well, two adjustments have been made. Number one, they've gotten into a flow. And number two, they're going against Boston College's twos. But again, this is all about character. This is all about revealing character. You know, adversity doesn't create character. It just reveals it. O'Brien steps up, and his throw is high and incomplete. Devin Burns, the intended receiver. Yeah, Boston College shuttling guys in and out right now. Frank Spaziani giving some of the, uh, the two deeps a chance to play and maybe getting some fresh legs in there. But guess who's still out there? Number 40. Mr. Keekley. Second and 10, O'Brien's throw to the sideline. It's on the mark, and there for a first down. Toxin, who had the touchdown catch. And the freshman from Baltimore has had a nice day. Keekley was over there. On this drive, Danny O'Brien is now five of seven. Wide open, there's Furstenberg, again at the seven yard line. O'Brien in rhythm, on the mark, and Maryland moving the ball. Six of eight on this drive. First and goal. Lob pass for the corner, deflected. It looked like Manny Espria got a hand on it. Quentin McCree was the intended receiver. Coming right at you. Espria gets up. Looks like he, if he didn't get his hand on it, he certainly shielded or, or distracted. Second down goal from the six. They'll keep it on the ground, and it's Pickett, who's close. Now let's see if he's in. Officials racing to the spot. They're saying no right now, early indication. They'll bring up third down and goal. A foot away. Maryland signaling that they want to play, and they need to get it going quickly. It is a hurry up offense by design. But they certainly aren't hurrying up right now. O'Brien keeps it over the left side. And I don't think he's in. He's not. Fourth and goal from the one. Wow. And I think the Terps are going to actually call a timeout here just to stop the clock, collect themselves, and try to stick it in. These types of plays are so difficult to determine. When did forward progress end? Where is the ball? The ball right now is just shy of the goal line. We'll see, he gets turned, and the ball is on the backside. Is behind him, if you will. If he was able to lead with the football, he may have been in.
There's a look from the goal line. And there's no way to conclusively tell. Oh, the ball, you, you see the ball's ball. back here. Yeah. And the officials had a pretty clean look at it. So this is now an official review. And the review is over. And the play, the call stands. Or I guess is confirmed. The spot is confirmed. Is that the official way to say it? I didn't hear him. <laughs> yes. I, did, I don't know. Call stands. One of three on fourth down is Maryland. This is fourth and goal, fourth and inches. DJ Adams, the short yardage back, is behind O'Brien. And O'Brien going to keep it again. I don't know if he got in this time. There's the push. The pile is forward. They're looking. He's in. Touchdown. This time he led with the football, and he got a little bit of a push as well. We're going to look right down that line. Goes up, then over, and then through. Boy, he can thank D.J. Adams for yep. that. Yep. Had Adams not gotten a hold of him. Plus, if we could look at that same replay again, it looked like the official. There was only one that was getting in there. The official on the far side slipped. And didn't didn't have the cleanest of looks, but uh, from Adams' help, it looked like O'Brien was in. This has been the the day so far for Danny O'Brien in the snow through a pick. It's not been great in terms of percentage but has been able to get outside the box, make some plays. This was the long touchdown throw to Coxon. And, and Maryland may have learned a little bit about how to utilize O'Brien because to date, through a year and a half, not a lot of time running the ball. But he's shown that he is fairly efficient at doing so. There's the Terrapins' upcoming schedule. At Virginia, then at Notre Dame, three in a row. In fact, both of these teams have Notre Dame on their schedule. Boston College will visit uh, South Bend. Also have to go down to South Beach. Well, not quite South Beach, but Miami Gardens to take on the Hurricanes. NC State and Florida State still have to come up to Chestnut Hill. All right, onside kick formation again. They tried it to that uh, left side and didn't get it. This one popped up. And Pantelli got the first one, and he gets the second one. He took it away from Keekley. <laughs> see, it's fun to see an All-American like Keekley in on the kickoff team and the kick return team, the hands team. You get big guys who can catch the ball, and you put them up there. And Pantelli has done it twice. There's Keekley. I think if Keekley had his way, he would be on the punt team, the punt return team, I think the field goal unit. I think he'd show up early and fix popcorn. He'd stay late and clean up the stadium. There's Keekley with his 12 tackles. 30th, 30th consecutive game with double-digit tackles. And now Boston College will run the football. Maryland's going to stop the clock. Andre Williams with the carry on the generators power play of the game. Andre Williams over the right side. I know Williams and Finch are the guys that have scored the touchdowns. Emmidon on a, a reverse behind the generators power play of the game. But and give as much credit to the Boston College offensive line as you can in this one. A 349 yard rushing day. Keekley in the BC defense have had their moments as well. And I think a lot of why Boston College was successful running the ball was that they finally got a couple of three weeks where they've got the same five on their offensive line. They can get a little continuity, get a little used to each other as you see the upcoming schedule for BC. 
And I think uh, when, they, when you look back on it, their ability to work out Thursday in the, in the wet and the cold up at Chestnut Hill has ended up being a big benefit down here in College yeah, Park. That, that was a good coaching decision, the Thursday to say, boys, today we're going out in the mud and the wet and we're going to have some fun. And that's where they practice. And they've played like they are comfortable in these conditions here this afternoon. Maryland's going to call their last time out here in hopes that they're going to get at least get the ball back and try to score again and have something miraculous happen. Well, this isn't, in, in one sense, for Randy Edsel, again, Rich, repeating myself from earlier, this isn't so much about trying to win the ball game, but which of my kids, which of these kids are going to continue to fight and play hard when, when you know, the odds are seemingly insurmountable? Well, for Maryland, when, when Edsel showed up on campus, not only was it a change in head coach, it was a change in offensive system, defensive system, and uh, the Terps very young, a very good recruiting class. They feel like they have another good class coming in. And as Edsel told us a month ago, it really is a process. It's not something that you come in and sprinkle pixie dust around and magically have a great team and a great program. Eagles with nearly three times their season average in rushing yards. BC will keep it on the ground. Busting loose is Williams, and Williams is down to the 14-yard line. He lost the stripe on his helmet, but not the football. He just keeps moving his feet, and nobody gets a clear hold of him. There's that stripe sticking up in the air. And he just keeps turning and working and turning and working and down the field he goes. Cameron Chisholm finally comes up to make the <laughs> tackle. That's quite a look. It's almost like he's got an antenna on his helmet. Clock approaching a minute left. And the Boston College is simply going to take a knee here. Classy move rather than try to stick it in. Well, these two squads play each other every year. So you're going to be in uh, Chestnut Hill or College Park, as it were, every other year. And Coach Faziani, despite all of the difficulty that this season has brought, has continued to work this club. The kids have continued to work themselves. The attitude has remained good. And we've seen them. We saw them play a good first half at Clemson. We saw him play a, uh, a very good first half at Virginia Tech the last game. And they uh, come out here and put four solid quarters together. And uh, Frank Spaziani has his first ACC win of the year. Second win overall. Another big day for Luke Keekley and a terrific day for Rolandon Finch. As uh, Finch getting a, a career high 39 carries 243 yards and two touchdowns and it's a final on a snowy cold wet miserable day for Boston College a beautiful day Frank Spaziani down below the Jim Hilton. Beautiful day Rich I don't know about that but coach uh, it is a, a victorious day for your team what got you this one? Well it's a beautiful day I mean so 75 degrees and sunny and it's as nice a day as we've had in a long time so uh, we're happy about it and we're gonna move on to the next one. Okay well, well what won this game for you? Well I think we were able to run the ball and and, and, and once again if this is about mental toughness and stuff both teams came out in very very bad conditions and uh, we were able to get up early and and continue to move the ball and uh, you know we struggled but hey we got a victory and we're, we're happy about it. It's incredible to think that Rolandon Finch started very low in your depth chart and what a game he had today. Yeah you saw why he started low don't you right? He had a couple of well, <laughs> well he made up for it. Yes he did. Bro. He, he, he came back and he did a great job and, and we're happy for the young man. All right well coach congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. I had a suspicion, Jen, that he would think it was a beautiful day. And there's Rolandon Finch and the two fumbles that Finch had. Remember, he got pulled from the game after that, and he was well over 100 yards. His coach went back to him, Keith, in the second half, and he responded by bursting 
all the way out to 243 yards. And I think uh, he'll be the first, and we as well would be able to mention that, uh, you know, it, it, that offensive line of Boston College, a, a phenomenal performance. Uh, obviously, in conditions like this, you're inclined to run the ball, and that becomes a mindset. But uh, everybody up front did a great, great job, and I'm sure uh, Orlando Finch will, will mention that as well, Jim. line what do you think they do a good job for you today oh yeah they uh they put it together today i'm you know i'm real proud of them and uh you know he's just a, they had a good outing today probably one of the best all year so well talk about when it comes to having a good outing when your uniform looks like this after the game that generally means you've been working hard right oh uh, yes ma'am it was real sloppy out here you know um but uh, we try not to let the conditions mess with us. Uh, we practiced in something similar on Thursday, so I think we came out prepared for the conditions. How important was it for you to put those fumbles out of your mind and move on for the second half? It was really important. You know, I was uh, disappointed in myself, but, um, you know, with these elements that comes, but uh, that's not an excuse. I got to uh, hold on to the ball, but I'm happy I could uh, come out here and just keep running. So at one point, our guys said they thought that nobody else on the field was probably happy other than your offensive line. And then they said, well, maybe Finch is happy. Are you pretty happy? Do you feel this nasty weather out here? Uh, I feel it. Uh, I think our whole team is happy. You know, uh, we've been uh, struggling a little bit, and we it's good to come out and get a win this weekend. All right. Enjoy the win. Congratulations. Right, Rich? Big day for Roland and Finch as Boston College comes into College Park in the sleet and the snow. No fear for that.